You're listening to Football Friday Night On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with high school football scores, updates, and news by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. Oh, week 10 of Football Friday Night. It's going to be a screamer. That's right. Week 10 of the high school football. One week left after tonight, and then we got playoffs abound all over the state of New Mexico and West Texas. Welcome to Football Friday Night. I'm Bo Bagley alongside Paul McKinnon and producer Angel Munoz. We've got a lot of fun games on tap. We have 10 reporters all around town. And one of our main ones we're talking about tonight, our 915 Tours Game of the Week. The Bowie Bears at the Austin Panthers. Adrian Bronis is there at the game at R.E. McKee Stadium. Should be a fun one. Bowie coming in, winners of seven straight, 2-0 and in district. Meanwhile, Austin, very difficult schedule. 1-1 and in district after a tough loss to Riverside last week. Coming in, uh, Paul is bringing here the Sultan of Stats. We've been talking about it in our El Paso Association of Builders pregame show. What was? What are you looking forward to most in this exciting 915 Tours Game of the Week matchup? I don't know what I'm... <laughs> Who's going to win the, the the battle of the running game? I mean, these teams are more versatile, but what they do run in the old wing T offense without the wing, so it's a, it's a pro set technically, but uh, split backs. Whoever's run offense can't be stopped. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to. Both these guys have tricks. They can both throw the football now, but is the Austin defense going to be able to stop the Bowie running game? If the answer is yes, then uh, you got to love Austin's chances. Is, is the Bowie defense going to be tough enough to stop uh, Austin's power running game? If the answer is yes, then uh, Bowie's going to have a great chance. I'm, I'm excited for Bowie. I mean, this is a big moment for them. They have seven in a row. This is confident as they're going to get. I think they're going to play as well as they ever have. And you still don't know if that's going to be enough because Austin traditionally has just been a bear, especially over the last seven years since Eric Pichardo took over. They always show up. They always have a quality team. And, you know, I guess we'll find out, you know, if Bowie's, uh, you know, smoking mirrors or, or how much substance there is to him. Very much. Well, ha- that game just kicking off at Austin's Ari McKee Stadium. We'll head out to Austin High School hosting Bowie in just a little bit. We'll go through our Ignitify local scoreboard in just a moment. First, we have s- some live action a kickoff at the Student Activities Complex. Let's head out to J.D. Sursley, El Dorado hosting Montwood. Montwood clinches a playoff, victor- uh, playoff berth with a win tonight. J.D., take it away. What do you got for us? All right, El Dorado could not have started any better. They want to pull that upset and, you know, keep on with a one week away of, like, not getting into that playoffs. Um, Alba Rab, the tw- number 21, he did an amazing kickoff return, about 55 yards. And then Ryan Estrada, the, the lead chief a- Aztec for El Dorado, scampers 42 yards on his first run to the left. And then the very next play, three yard. Uh, touchdown, so El Dorado 7, Montwood 0, 11-39. Um, right after the kickoff, they just they just bowled down like nothing. <laughs> J.D., thank you so much. This is what El Dorado was hoping for all season right. long. Unfortunately, Ryan Estrada really hurt through a lot of the season, um, and El Dorado looking to pull up the upset right now over Montwood. So many teams in, uh, in 6A this year just altered by, you know, how, how healthy – They've been able to be, and by the way, this is against a terrific Montwood team. Montwood was undefeated a couple of weeks ago, and they ran into maybe the two best teams in the district. Of course, Eastwood gave them everything uh, that they could handle. Eastwood, as usual, as is their want, uh, won that one late. And then, uh, again, Pebble Hills, uh, the week prior, that was a 16-14 game. Montwood had a chance to kick a field goal with about a minute and a half left. Uh, opted uh, instead to go for it on fourth and eight from their own nine-yard Excuse me, from the the uh, Pebble nine yard line, and and that didn't work out too well. So a couple of tough losses. 
let's talk about resiliency. You know, you're bouncing back from those two things. Are you disappointed? Do you have resolve? All of a sudden, El Dorado, a team with just one win on the season, they're up seven zip on you. Let's see if uh, Montwood shows up or if they go away. That's right. El Dorado just one and seven overall, one and four in district. Meanwhile, the Montwood Rams coming off a really tough 48 41 loss to Eastwood last week, uh, four and two in district. So let's go through the Ignitify local scoreboard. Ignitify, your AC installation service provider, and our 6A scoreboard. Of course, we got El Dorado hosting Montwood right now. El Dorado now up 7 0. Eastwood hosting Franklin tonight. If Eastwood wins, they clinch the district title. It's going to be a fun one there. Once again, Franklin nursing a lot of injuries. And then a one that you saw last night, Paul. Uh, Pebble Hills defeated East Lake 31-21, so Pebble Hills likely, as you said, uh, the top team out of the large schools in 6A after clinching a playoff berth. Yeah, that's why uh, Eastwood, uh, if, if, if you like order, Eastwood beating Franklin is such a big deal. You've got to clear out all those teams that have a chance to move into you know three-way ties for uh, some position or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Eastwood beats Franklin. We're going to be up, we're going to be able to tell you who's where pretty much by the end of the night. So that's what we got. We got Pebble Hills over East Lake last night, and once again, six A Eastwood hosting Franklin tonight, and El Dorado already up seven nothing on Montwood tonight. Uh, let's go. Americus has a bye week. They will play Socorro next week. Uh, let's go to 5A. And we got another fun one over at Hank's Excalibur Stadium. Once as, as we go through our Ignitify local scoreboard, let's head out to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn. The Hank's Knights hosting the Parkland Matadors. And we have some action over at Excalibur Stadium. Iceman, take it away. 11.50 to go first quarter. Hank's 7, Parkland, nothing. First play of the game. Hank's quarterback, Marcus Porras. Throws a 75-yard strike to wide out. Jude Blanco, PAT, was good. Ten seconds goes by already. Hanks up 7-0 over Parkland. All right, Brandon Cohn, a 75-yard touchdown for the wide receiver, the speedy wide receiver, Jude Blanco, 7 nothing Hanks. you got to look to think that Parkland has been up in the upper echelon of this district for several years. This could be a pretty much a, an upset right here for the Hanks Knights. And everything we just said about Mom would say the same thing about Parkland. You know, Parkland uh, coming away off uh, from a tough loss that that OT game with uh, with Bel Air a week ago. Remember, uh, Omar Martin is the you know the big uh, TD catch to win a twenty five yarder in over in overtime, and then the fumble recovery. Uh, Anthony Carrillo, uh, that was our game of the week last week. A tough loss for Parkland. They've got a couple under their belt, and the same thing. You know, Hanks jumps out on top of them, seven to nothing. You know, are they down on their luck, down on their confidence? Do they kind of go away, or or do they really rally, rally the cause? Uh, Parkland, obviously the favorite, I would think, coming into this one. And Hanks, the team just looking to get back in the playoffs. They haven't been there since 2019. Jude Blanco, by the way, should be over. 1,300 yards now, uh, top receiver in the city with that uh, 75-yard touchdown reception. Very much so. Once again, Hanks over uh, strikes first. Hanks up 7 nothing over the Parkland Matadors. Let's head out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week at Austin's Ari McKee Stadium. Austin and Bowie, here's Adrian Broaddus with a live update. Adrian. Thank you guys so much. 8-11 left here in the first quarter. Austin just put together an eight-play 86-yard opening touchdown drive that was capped off by a four-yard rushing touchdown thanks to running back Ruben Bustillos. The drive was jump-started by quarterback Anakin Torres, who threw two passes. They were both complete for 56 yards. And Andrew Andujo, the sophomore, he was the one who was able to haul those two in. So, again, 8-11 left here in the first quarter. Austin up 6 nothing over Bowie. All right, Adrian brought us with that call on our 915 Tours Game of the Week. 915 Tours, a division of classic elegance coaches, providing the best travel packages from El Paso to Dallas for Cowboy home games. Packages include round-trip travel, hotel stay at the Dallas Omni, and ultimate fan experience tailgate. Meet and greet with a player and your ticket to watch the Dallas Cowboys. Follow on Facebook or Instagram to learn more at 915tours.com. Once again, here, here we go. Austin over Bowie, 6 0. Uh, Austin strikes first. Now we'll see what the Bowie Bears are for real if they can stick close. Yeah, a bad sign if you're the Bowie defense. Uh, they were able to throw the football. You want to come into the game, and, and priority one is hey, we got to stop the running game. They hit you with a couple of uh, air balls. I mean, that's just going to loosen things up even more for that uh, Bowie defensive front seven. So, uh, yeah, terrific start for Austin. 
All right, Paul, thank you very much. Let's go through our Ignitify local scoreboard once again. Let's go 6A games. We have Eastwood hosting Franklin, El Dorado hosting Montwood, and once again, Pebble Hills victorious over Eastlake last night with Americus on a bye week. In 5A, Isleta hosting Delvai. Joe Rodriguez on the call there. Delvai can clinch the district title with a win tonight at the reservation. Should be a fun one. Delvai 3-0 and in district. Meanwhile, Isleta two and one and Isleta defeated Riverside earlier this year so Isleta is very much very capable of pulling off the upset uh still in 6a I'm 5a I should say Bel Air and Horizon Bel Air one of the surprising teams of the year seven and one overall two and one in district hosting Horizon just one win on the year Bel Air coming in if they win this tonight then they get a shot at Del Valle next week for a share of the district title this is a lot on the line in 5a yeah and you got to ask yourself when's the last time Bel Air not had a shot at a district title but won a district title you know there's so many strange groupings over the years with these four you know four team divisions and stuff but I would say I, I doubt Bel Air's won a district title since you know Bob Savage and yes. eight yeah 82 and uh, you know, I know there were some other uh, uh, pretty good teams out there, but I don't, I don't think district champs uh, until all the way back then. By the way, Bell are off to a great start. They should have an easy time uh, with Horizon tonight, and that's the way it looks so far. Chris Davis, our Bill Coon, tells us an 85-yard TD pass. Knocked him out to a quick uh, 7 to nothing lead. 8-16 now left in the first quarter. That lead has grown to 13 to nothing. Bel Air all over Horizon, and uh, nothing should change throughout the night in that one. And once again, we'll hear from Bill Kuhn in just a little bit from Bel Air's Highlander Stadium. So that's a look at 5A. So 5A Division Two. you have, uh, once again, uh, El Paso and Chapin, I should say. Chapin hosting this one at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Uh, went up against Canateo last week. Canateo got the 21-14 win. Canateo basically earning a share of the, uh, the, the district title earning a district title tonight outright with a win, hosting Jefferson tonight. Chapin just uh, looking to be the second seed out of that one. Uh, Chapin, a very capable team. El Paso High put up 42 points last week. Of course, a 61-42 loss to Burgess. But El Paso High can put up some points. Let's see if they can stick around with Chapin tonight. Again, Chapin, uh, the class of that one. Do got to remember the Wade kid went down, a terrific running back for, uh, for Chapin, third quarter of that Canyon Teal game a week ago. You know, you wonder, 21-14 loss, you wonder how that might have affected uh, uh, the Chapin off. Well, it did affect the Chapin offense, but, I mean, the final score, you know, just seven-point spread. So, uh, Wade not on the field tonight. And, and, by the way, you mentioned Del Valle a little bit earlier. Remember uh, uh, Shelton Fuller going down uh, a week ago. Uh, that one didn't look good at all. And uh, Brandon Cohn has his, has his eye on that one. But, uh, yeah, I don't believe Fuller's uh, getting on the, on the field tonight. There was a few injuries. Uh, 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 Anthony Miranda for uh, Americas when he went down to the Coronado game. <laughs> they actually had a 24 14 lead late, but the Coronado Thunderbirds, boy, did they ever take advantage of Miranda's absence. He went down uh, clumsily, uh, awkwardly, <laughs> better way to say it, uh, on, a, on a jet sweep, and he's gone on offense, but, but the fact that uh, he's their top uh, defender, maybe the best D back in the city, once he was gone, Coronado just targeted that and deep ball of Palooza toward uh, where Anthony Miranda normally was. Hit on a couple of big ones, got a TD out of it from uh, from Golden, and then uh, Blake Randag set up their final uh, TD with about 30 seconds left. Uh, Mur- uh, Murray uh, ran on in, and they took that 28-24 victory. No Anthony Miranda. So when you lose key guys, I mean, it, it makes a major difference. And one of the reasons why is Eastwood so good? Why are they undefeated? We'll take a look at who their skill guys are. There they still are. I mean, Hottis is their quarterback. Mancia, who ran for over a couple of hundred yards last year, last week on more than 30 carries. Uh, the receivers, Rudy Garcia has been there the whole time. Lawan is there. They're, they haven't lost any skill guys, and, and I think it shows in, in their continuity week to week. Very much so. Also in that district, Burgess Mustangs host Andrus. Burgess put 61 points up on El Paso High last week. So remember, Andrus just 2-1 and one in district, but 3-5 and five overall. So we'll see if the Burgess Mustangs can hang with Andrus Eagles in that one. Also, Kennetio hosting Jefferson. Over in 4A, we have the Battle of the Cotton Valley. Fabens hosting Clint. Also, San Elizario hosting Irvin. Winner of that game likely into the playoffs. Both teams just... Uh, 
Two wins combined between Irvin and Senna Lozario. Also, Mountain View at Monahans, a very tough game for the Lobos there. And uh, Pecos hosting Fort Stockton. Monahans and Fort Stockton, the two classes of that district in 4A. Also, Cathedral traveling to St. Dominic Savio tonight. Cathedral 4-5 and five overall, their last game of the season. Savio coming this one 6-2. and two. And this from our buddy Alex Nicholas, who has his uh, ears on, thank goodness. Last Bel Air District Championship, 1990. Uh, they won it 89 and 90. And, of course, they had that five-year run from the uh, late 70s at 77 to 81 before Eastwood and Arnold Ducre finally got them. And uh, remember back then they were only taking uh, one team per district. And then in 82, uh, that's the first time they started taking two teams from each district. So four teams in El Paso actually qualified for the playoffs. Slight difference from now. Uh, what is it, 20? <laughs> it seems like everybody a gets joke. a participation trophy. Congratulations. Hey, let's head back out to the Student Activities Complex. Join J.D. Sursley. He has an update of Montwood at El Dorado. J.D. All right, this one's probably going to be another good one. Uh, El Dorado 7, Montwood 6. Right after I told you that Ryan Estrada just took it down the field. Uh, Montwood themselves. Oh, Montwood just fumbled. And it is El Dorado ball. So now two teams, uh, both teams have have turnover on downs technically, one turnover and then one missed field goal on El Dorado on the previous drive. But going back to the, the previous drive uh, before the fumble, Montwood, uh, uh, Gio Varela caught a beautiful 64-yard bomb from Michael Southern. Um, they missed the field goal, the extra point. So uh, it is Montwood 6, El Dorado 7. They just fumbled, and El Dorado got it back uh, in, at midfield. All right, six left in the first quarter. All right, J.D. Sersley on the call there. Thank you very much. Once again, Montwood clenches a postseason berth with a win tonight over the El Dorado Aztecs, but the Aztecs leading it so far 7-6 to six in the first quarter. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to go through all 10 of our reporters and give you score updates from the land of enchantment to West Texas. That's next on Football Friday Night, the Week 10 edition, right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Ghostbusters, welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN uh, El Paso. If you th- see something scary in the neighborhood, it's maybe Eastwood and Franklin. So it could be scary out there for the Eastwood Troopers, but we're going to go all around town right now, get score updates. Let's head out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Join Adrian Broadus for an update as Austin is hosting Bowie. Adrian, what do you got for us? Hey guys, 224 left here in the first quarter. Austin still leading Bowie 6 0. Fourth and goal approaching for the Austin Panthers as they drove all the way down to the Bowie uh, two yard line. Anakin Torres getting the play call. I'll do this one here with you guys and give you some hot action as this is a huge uh, uh, play of this game. And they are going for it here on fourth down. Anakin Torres comes out. He's got. Uh, Ruben Bustillos in the backfield with him. He snaps the ball. He hands the ball off to Bustillos, who's going to charge into the end zone. No, he's going to be stopped short. The Bowie Bears stop him at the one-yard line. And Ruben Bustillos stopped short. He had a touchdown earlier today from four yards out. But instead, the field will flip, and the Bowie Bears will have it first and ten at their own one-yard line with 146 left here in the first quarter. Austin leading Bowie. 6 nothing here in our 915 Tours Game of the Week. All right, Adrian brought us with the call there. 915 Tours, once again, a division of classic Elgin coaches will take you to Cowboy Home Games. Follow on Facebook or Instagram. Learn more at 915tours.com. Uh, Paul, that's a huge stop there. As we were saying, what can Bowie do to stay in this game? Comes up big right there with a fourth down stop. Uh, turnover on downs. That's what Bowie will need to do tonight. If they don't want to get steamrolled, it's what we're talking about. A lot of confidence coming in. Austin jumps right on you. A couple of plays, they're in the end zone. Next thing you know, right back down the field. Uh, again, uh, you know, I saw a little of this last night uh, with uh, with uh, Eastlake and uh, Pebble Hills. Pebble jumped on them quickly, you know, up a couple of scores. They roll past, and they wind up throwing an end zone interception. Uh, C.J. Garcia with a big, big pick, and all of a sudden, well, look, he's like back in his game, and as I said, into the third quarter, it's only a three-point game. So uh, hopefully for the sake of the Bowie Bears, uh, they can be similarly buoyed by, no, I'm making jokes that I don't even know about, but uh, by, by this huge uh, defensive stand. Let's see if their offense can uh, maybe get in a little rhythm, and, and let's have ourselves a game of the week. Absolutely. Hey, let's go to our Ignitify local scoreboard. Ignitify your AC installation service. Let's get some scores from around town. Once again, Austin High leading Bowie 6 nothing. that in the first quarter. Also in the first quarter, the Hanks Knights leading the Parkland Matadors 7 nothing. Jude Blanco, a 75-yard touchdown in that one. El Dorado, a bit shocking early over the Montwood Rams. El Dorado leading Montwood 7-6 that game in the first quarter. Chapin scores early over El Paso High. Huskies lead the Tigers 7 nothing in the first. Also in the first quarter, Clint in the Cotton Valley rivalry. The Clint Lions lead the Fabens Wildcats 6 nothing, and Bel Air scores really early, fast, and often leading Horizon 13 nothing in the first. Uh, check that. Make it 19 to nothing. Uh, our player of the week from last week, Oscar Martinez, two-yard uh, TD reception. Bill Kuhn tells us. Wow, 19 nothing Bel Air. We'll hear from Bel Air, uh, Bill Kuhn in just a little bit. Elsewhere, up in the land of enchantment, Las Cruces and Centennial tied at 7 at the Field of Dreams. That game is for the district championship. Also for the district championship, Gadsden is hosting Deming. No score in that one after the first quarter, so we'll keep you updated there. Deming and Gadsden, no score in that one at the start of the second quarter. At halftime, the Reagan County Owls lead Anthony 25-14, and we have a final from Alpine. Alpine has defeated Tornillo 43 nothing. Elsewhere, let's go out to the reservation. Is Leda hosting Del Valle, a big game between the two rivals? Let's head out to Joe Rodriguez, get an update from Hutchins Stadium. Joe. 321 left in the first quarter, and it is tied between the Isleta Indians and the Del Valle Conquistadores. 0-0, zero, zero, a couple of three and outs by each team to start the game. And then on the second possession for the Dubai Conquistadores, they had a fumble in the red zone recovered by Isleta. From there, Isleta took over the ball and went three and out. But in the process, quarterback Evan Martinez was injured, gets uh, escorted off the field by the, by the training staff. Which brings us to where we're at right now. It's fourth and goal on the Isleta three-yard line for the Del Valle Conquistadores. 
uh, he's going to call the timeout, and then apparently Del Valle calls the timeout. So I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you on the studio with 3.21 to go. In the opening quarter, it is tied 0-0 between Isleta and Del Valle. All right. Thank you, Joe. No score there between Del Valle and Isleta. Once again, Del Valle coming into this one 7-1, and while Isleta 4-4. Four and four. Joe Rodriguez on the call there. Joe, thank you very much. Last check. Between Hanks and Parkland, Hanks was up 7-0. Let's head out to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, and Excalibur Stadium. Get an update on Parkland at Hanks. Brandon. 421 to go here in the first quarter. It is now Parkland 7, Hanks 7 at the 421 mark. Parkland coming back to tie the contest as their quarterback Eric Ortiz calls his own number, runs straight up the middle, and scores on a 13-yard keeper. The PAT was good, making the score 7-7. And, of course, going back to the 11:50 mark, first play of the game, Hanks quarterback Marcus Porras throwing that 75-yard bomb to wideout Jude Blanco. 4:21 left opening quarter here at Matador Stadium. Parkland 7, Hanks 7. All right, Brandon Cohn with the call. 7-all right there between Parkland and Hanks. A big game there for the, the second seed playoff berth in that district. So, once again, tied at 7 between Parkland and and Hanks. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda at Trooper Stadium. The Eastwood Troopers could clinch the district championship with a win tonight over the Franklin Cougars. Let's go out to Steve Escajeda at Trooper Stadium for an update. Steve. Well, the Eastwood Troopers are well on their way already early in this ball game. 7.20 to go in the first quarter. Eastwood 14, Franklin nothing. Uh, Evan Mijadas, again, their great quarterback, has already thrown a couple of touchdown passes. First of all, a 35-yarder to Rudy Garcia, just a minute and five seconds into the ball game. On their second possession, uh, Mihad is at it again, a 47-yarder to Evan uh, uh, Macias, uh, to make it 14-0. Uh, right now, Eastwood has the ball for the third time, so uh, I expect some fireworks. In fact, they just passed for a first down at their own 40-yard line. So far, Mihad is uh, three out of uh, six in the ball game, 115 yards, two touchdowns already. And, uh, again, Eastwood well on their way, at least in the early going. 7.05 to go in the first quarter. Eastwood up on Franklin, 14 to nothing. And Bo, Evan Macias, he's a guy who's been part of the core four ever since uh, three years ago. Isaiah Pena, first game, had a huge game against Parkland. Into the game, blew his ACL. By the way, he's a receiver and uh, catching some passes from uh, fellow teammate Andrew Martinez out at Sol Ross. Last I checked, Martinez was a starting quarterback, and Isaiah Pena, <laughs> maybe his top receiver. But Macias has been, in, as I said, in that core four. He's the one who was elevated after Pena at the time Eastwood's top receiver uh, you know, was put on the shelf for the season. Macias has never found his niche, you know, maybe a catch for five yards. Other guys have gone on and... And uh, been the you know Curtis Murillo's of the world, Macias, a, a, a fringe guy, and c- came into this year with a knee injury, not even on the field. And we had four brand new receivers led by Rudy Garcia. Well, Macias just came back a couple of weeks ago in garbage time, second half of the Socorro blowout, had six or seven balls for a little over 120 yards. His first touchdown of the season had a few catches uh, last week in the uh, uh, Montwood win, including what would have been a key one before a fumble kind of wiped out a big play. But Macias is starting to get his feet wet. Uh, <laughs> this might be the most productive, and I'd say it is, the most productive he's been in his career, even though he's been in since a starter over the last three seasons. If this guy can really get his swerve on this late into the season, his addition could be a real boon for you know a trooper air attack that really doesn't seem to need any help anyway. Very much so. Once again, 14 nothing Eastwood over Franklin early on in the first quarter. Let's head out to the Student Activities Complex. At last check, it was the Aztecs leading the Montwood Rams 7-6. to Let's get an update from J.D. Sursley from the Student Activities Complex. J.D. All right, so this thing just getting a little fun. So, uh, yes, El Dorado, Elijah Issa uh, to Albert Rab, number 21, running back a 28-yard, a beautiful pass to make it 14-6. to and in the very next drive, which was a, a good uh, kick return by Montwood, then horse collar uh, penalty by El Dorado set them up on their opposite side, uh, Montwood side of the ball. And then uh, Isaiah Claudio with a nine-year-old touchdown run, running back number 22 for Montwood. And then Michael Southern connected with number four Caleb Alvarez for the two-point conversion to tie the game. So it is 14 Montwood, El Dorado 14, 44 seconds left in the game, uh, El Dorado driving. And nice to hear Isaiah Claudio back in the field. Uh, I missed last week. Of course, uh, he went down in that Pebble Hills loss in the in the first half. They were without their 
really only running back throughout that one. And, you know, the way Michael Southern was throwing the ball then and has been throwing the ball this season, you know, I guess it wasn't that noticeable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of 5A games, let's head out to Lowenberg Stadium, Canateo, all over Jefferson early on, second quarter, 14 nothing. Eagles lead the Silver Foxes. Also now in the third quarter down in 4A, Monahans. Monahans all over Mountain View, 49-7. to Once again, that in the third quarter. Uh, back at Chapin, last check, the Huskies led the Tigers 7-0. Chapin struck first. Let's get an update from reporter Zay Galindo at Irvin Memorial Stadium as Chapin hosting El Paso High. Zay, what do you got for us? Thanks, guys. With 2-12 left in the first quarter, the Huskies lead El Paso High 28-0. And Chapin just had back-to-back scores in a matter of about a minute. It started off with a Evan Rivera touchdown pass to Brent Hallman from about four yards out. And then on the ensuing play from El Paso High, they throw an interception. It's Fabian Garcia for the Chapin Huskies, taking it 35 yards to the house to give the Huskies a 28-0 lead with two minutes left. And a couple uh, storylines going into this one. El Paso High, not completely out of it yet, but they uh, they need a couple things to go their way for that four seed in 1-5A Division Two. Meanwhile, the Huskies have dealt with their fair of injuries. Kerry Wade, who went out last week against Conantillo, he suited out for the Huskies, but he hasn't seen the field yet. And Evan Rivera, the backup quarterback, getting the start over Davion Singleton today. So, once again, with 131 left in the first quarter, Chapin 28, El Paso High 0. Woo, Chapin Huskies. Wow. They're, they're the real deal. They're, Chapin and Kennetio, the classes of that district right now. But looks like after Kennetio's 21-14 win over Chapin last week, that Chapin will be the second seed in a playoff berth. But Chapin looking good tonight. 28 nothing in the first quarter over El Paso High. Speaking of that district, let's head out to Burgess Mustang Stadium. A tight one between the Burgess Mustangs and the Andrus Eagles. For first report, let's go out to Jeremy Caranco at Mustang Stadium for an update. Jeremy. 346 and counting in the first quarter, and it's Burgess off to an early 3 nothing lead over the Andrus Eagles. A District 2-5A matchup big tonight for the Andrus Eagles. A win tonight puts them in the playoffs for another year as the Andrus Eagles have found success on the football field, but they're struggling this year mildly. They just have three wins, and uh, Marcus Owens is taking off for a big run for Andrus. He might have a touchdown here, and he's out at the 5. It's just a huge 40-yard dash by Marcus Owens of Andrews Eagles now puts them inside the 10-yard line looking to go ahead here. Again, Burgess leading 3 nothing, And Caleb Hanna last week, 237 yards where he had some cramping issues. He's back out tonight and two touchdowns last week. Again, those were just first half stats. A big night and a big year for Caleb Hanna looking for to pass the 1,000-yard mark on the season. He is just 75 yards now short of that. So Andrews looks like they might punch it in here. We'll see. They need a win to get in the playoffs. So 321 left to go in the first quarter. It's Burgess 3 and Andrews 0. All right, Jeremy Caranco, thank you very much for that report. 3 nothing, Burgess Mustangs. Remember, Burgess scored 61 last week. Andrus coming in a little bit of limping, not the same Andrus Eagles team that we're accustomed to in district in the, out of the Northeast. Uh, just 2-1 and one in district, but 3-5 and five overall. And uh, trailing right now, trailing Burgess 3 nothing. But knocking in the door, uh, and that's the thing that's enjoyable about this Andrews team. All these kids are so young. We're going to be seeing a lot, a lot of them two years from now, <laughs> maybe some so. even three years from now. Elijah Cooper, the freshman, uh, jumps to mind. So, yeah, you know, uh, you, you get your licks in now if, if you're the rest of the district because uh, Andrews may be uh, bigger and badder a year from now. We got an update from uh, the Field of Dreams in the state of New Mexico. Centennial has just scored. Hawks now lead Las Cruces High 14-7. to That game for the district championship in New Mexico. Let's head out to Fabens and join the Cotton Valley Classic. Angel Torres there as Fabens hosting Clint for an update. Let's go out to Angel Torres. Angel, take it away. With 5.30 left in the second quarter, the Clint Lions lead the Faden Wildcats 6-0. Uh, quarter of the quarterback Eric Ortiz threw an interception on fourth down inside Lions territory, which led to a Zach Delgado 12-yard touchdown run. The two-point try was no good, and Clint leads 6-0. Number 23, Ivan Ramirez had a great special teams play that pinned that Clint inside their own five-yard line. Um, Clint went for it on fourth and four inside their own 40, and a miscommunication turns into a fading sack and a turnover on downs. 
Fabians is approaching the red zone, and uh, as so as we sit, sit right now, it is uh, Fabians, or excuse me, Clint six, Fabians zero in the second quarter. All right, Angel Torres with that report. Thank you very much, Angel. 6 nothing, Clint over Fabens. Remember, Clint coming in 1-2 and two in district. Fabens still looking for their first district victory. Uh, let's go out to Bill Coon. This has been all Bel Air at Highlander Stadium, prepping for a showdown next week with the Del Valle Conquistadors, hopefully not overlooking Horizon tonight, and it sure looks like they're not overlooking the Horizon Scorpions. Let's go out to Highlander Stadium. Join Bill Coon for this update on Bel Air hosting Horizon. Bill. 11 minutes left in the first half. It is uh, Bel Air 19, Horizon 0. Bel Air got the ball first with five plays, a little over a minute, 12-yard run by quarterback Noah Moreno for the first touchdown. Horizon comes out, turns the ball over. One play, 85 yards for Christopher Davis, as gets him the second touchdown. That extra point was no good. Third possession that Beller had was a uh, 20-yard carry by uh, Martinez, uh, Oscar Martinez, uh, for their third touchdown. Extra point, no good. Now the second half has not been as good for Bel Air. Uh, they've they've uh, thrown an interception and fumbled the ball uh, in this second half. Horizon's moving a little bit right now for the first time of the game, and they've got a second first down. So with 10 minutes left. In the first half, it is Bel Air 19, Horizon 0. And, Bo, this just in from uh, Brandon Cohn. Well, looks like a good one, uh, Hanks and Parkland. Uh, Marcus Portis, three-yard keeper, uh, five seconds left in the first quarter, and the Hanks Knights jump back out on top of Parkland, 14-7. to <laughs> This one could be fun. Absolutely, and it's going to be fun for the Eastwood Troopers. If you're a Trooper fan over at Trooper Stadium, it, uh, per reporter Steve Escajeda, it's now 21 nothing Eastwood leading Franklin right now. Eastwood really all over the Cougars. Yeah, and Evan Mihadis, uh one-yard touchdown run made me giggle when uh, Steve Escajeda in his pregame said, uh, you know, Mihadis can run a little, and I was thinking he can run a lot. The 23-yard <laughs> touchdown run a week ago. Remember, a, a tie game with Montwood, and he just hits the right sideline and makes a hard cut, and it was like Carl Lewis in the second half of, you know, the Olympics back in the day where he would just hit overdrive and just leave everybody else in the dust. This kid has has an extra gear. You want to know why he... You know, he can run for 75 yards in a score when, you know, other people are running for 12 or 15 because he's elusive and he runs hard and he's a heck of an athlete. Very much so. Uh, so once again, Eastwood leading Franklin 21 nothing. Uh, let's go out to uh, Irvin and San Elizario. San Elizario hosting this one. Winner this game uh, earns a last playoff berth. Let's head out to Ryan Vidalis at Eagle Stadium for an update on San Elizario hosting Irvin. Ryan, take it away. With 9.05 left in the second quarter, it has been all Irvin Rockets by a score of 22-0. Uh, coming out right now, actually just a couple seconds ago, uh, Irvin Rockets quarterback Dallas Medina on a one-play drive finds Jamal Rocha on a slant for 54 yards, and he takes it all the way to house for the easy touchdown. Prior to that, okay, it was a little bit of a deja vu, uh, it looks like. Um, running back, number four, Angel Rodriguez, really watched film this week because on special teams, back-to-back, he has two blocked punts. Mm. Both those blocked punts lead to a short field, which leaves uh, number two, Israel Martinez, for a seven-yard easy touchdown run and a two-yard easy touchdown run out of the Wildcat. So, obviously, Urban Rockets seem to have watched their film, and they're really taking control of this game right now. Once again... With 9.05 left in the second quarter, it is Urban Rockets 20, San Elizario Eagles is 0. All right, Ryan Vidalis uh, on the call there from San Elizario Eagles Stadium. 20 to nothing, Irvin leading San Eli in the first quarter. Some other scores we have for you. Canatia leading Jefferson, 14 nothing in the second quarter. Bel Air over Horizon, 19 nothing. Clint leading Fabens, 6 nothing. Andrus has now scored, leading Burgess, 7 to 3, that in the first quarter. Chapin all over El Paso High, 28 nothing in the first. El Dorado and Montwood tied at 14 in the first quarter. Eastwood leading Franklin 21-0 in the first quarter. 
Hanks leading Parkland 14 to 7 in the first. No score, a bit surprising, between Delvai and Isleta. This game going into the second quarter, so no score there at Hutchins Stadium. And in our 915 Tours game of the week, the Austin Panthers lead the Bowie Bears 6 0. Up in the land of enchantment, Centennial leads Las Cruces 14 to 7 in the first. No score between Gadsden and Deming. That game now in the second quarter. Artesia all over Mayfield in the first quarter. Yikes. 36 0. Artesia leading Mayfield. And uh, of halftime, Reagan County leading Anthony 25 14. And Alpine defeated Tornillo. This is a final 43 0. Alpine over Tornillo. And uh, out at the sack, we got a good one going on again. Ryan Estrada, that man, the sophomore, 51 yard TD run, 10 27 left in the first half. El Dorado now back out on top of Montwood, 21 14. Wow, Estrada getting it done again over there in 6A. El Dorado leading Montwood, 21 14. Chapin now up uh, 28 zip over El Paso High. Uh, our buddy Zay tells us uh, Fabian Garcia, uh, pick six. Well, yep. And right. takes it to the house. Uh, Martin Gonzalez gets picked off. All right, 28 nothing. Chapin over El Paso High. Let's head back out to Eastwood's Trooper Stadium. More action between Eastwood and Franklin. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda for an update. Steve. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We told you that the Eastwood was up uh, 21 to nothing, and they had received the ball to have a little more to score. Well, if they had their first three and out of the night, uh, deep in their own territory, they went back to punt, and Franklin blocked the punt. Uh, taken over at the Eastwood 14-yard line. One play later, quarterback Shea Smith kept it right up the middle to score untouched to cut into the lead. It is now Eastwood 21, Franklin 7, with 2.53 to go in the first quarter. However, the Troopers are already at the uh, Franklin 22-yard uh, line, looking at a second and nine, uh, again, to add to the score. But Franklin not done quite yet. Again, 2.40 and counting in the first quarter. It is now Eastwood 21, Franklin 7. All right, Steve Escajeda with the call there from Trooper Stadium, 21 to 7. Eastwood leading Franklin. Franklin getting a uh, touchdown from Shea Smith right there. Hobbled, uh, you know, he's had uh, arm problems, uh, arm injuries all, all year. It's uh, It's been uh, trying to piece together anything they can for the Franklin Cougars and uh, Smith uh, leading them to a touchdown. And this is the best part about playing Eastwood. Are they be- the best team in the city? I'd have to think. You know, you, yeah, you'd have to say they are. But are they going to carry you? Because they nobody Eastwood doesn't get away from anybody. Uh, the Socorro game uh, was, you know, they walked through them. Who else have they beaten by more than a score? Who else has not been within a touchdown of Eastwood uh, going into the fourth quarter this year? I, th- I think n- nobody in that in that six A district. Coronado was right there. America was, was right there. El Dorado, they needed a, a pick six from uh, Joseph Garcia with a couple of minutes uh, left to put that one away. That's just the way it is with Eastwood and anybody. And it uh, looks like here, come, here comes Franklin, maybe, uh, back within 21-7. to seven. We'll see what happens. Hey, we have an update from Lowenberg Stadium. The Canateo Eagles have scored again. They now lead the Jefferson Silver Foxes 21 nothing. that game in the second quarter. Once again, this is week 10 of the high school football season. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll have much more scores and highlights. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night, the scary edition. Well, scary if you're a Cathedral Fighting Irish fan down in Austin taking on St. Dominic Savio. Football Friday Night, Week 10 edition. Cathedral currently tra trailing Savio right now at halftime, 28 nothing. Let's get you some scores from the Land of Enchantment as well. No score between Deming and Gadsden. Centennial leading Las Cruces High 14-7 to in the first. Also in the first, Artesia all over Mayfield, 36 nothing. Uh, down at Reagan County. Reagan County Owls leading Anthony 25-14. And Alpine defeated Tornillo 43-0. Let's go to our game one, game 915 tours, game of the week. Austin and Bowie in our two-minute drill. Adrian brought us with an update. Adrian. Hey, guys, 308 left here in the first half. Austin still leads, leads Bowie 6 nothing uh, here in the first half. However, Quickly, uh, Bowie was able to hold Austin on another fourth and goal stop. Bowie uh, couldn't do anything offensively on the punt. It was Kevin Hernandez who came up with the muff. Uh, and now Bowie threatening down to the Austin Panthers 18-yard line facing a third and 12 coming up. 304 left here in the opening half. Austin up 6 nothing over Bowie. Adrian Broaddus, thank you very much. An update from our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Austin Panthers hosting the Bowie Bears. Hey, we finally have a touchdown down at Hutchins Stadium. Isleta hosting Devai. For an update, let's go to Joe Rodriguez. Joe. Nine minutes to go in the second quarter, and it is Del Valle leading Isleta by the score of 7 to 0. But just as I'm coming off the air, Manu, uh, Martin Castro just broke a touchdown from 22 yards out to uh, make the score 7 6. Let me tell you about the Del Valle touchdown. One up to let that 18 yard touchdown run. One play on that drive was all they needed after a very good punt return. The extra point was good. That was at the 10 35 mark. And right now, with 8.45 left to go in the second quarter, he kind of just scored, and they botched the field goal attempt, and uh, it will be no good. And with 8.45 left to go in the second quarter, it will be Del Valle leading the sled up by the score of 7-6. to six. All right, Joe Rodriguez from Hutchins Stadium down on the reservation. Delvai leading his led a 7-6 after the missed PAT. Let's head out to Hank's Excalibur Stadium. Hank's hosting Parkland. For an update, let's go to Brandon Cohn. Brandon. 6.55 remaining in the first half, and Parkland is taking a 17-14 lead over Hank's. Five seconds to go in the very first quarter. Hank's quarterback Porras ends up scoring on a three-yard keeper making the score Hanks 14-7 over Parkland. Then Parkland establishes a solid drive and attempts a 42-yard field goal by kicker Adrian Loya, and it was good, making the score Hanks 14-10 over Parkland. Then at the 10-minute mark of this second quarter, Hanks' first blunder of the game is their wide receiver Michael Oliver fumbles at their 45, recovered by linebacker Juan Gomez. Four plays later, the Matadors capitalize as quarterback Porras scores on a one-yard keeper. We have exactly... 6.35 remaining, opening half, Parkland, 17-14 to 14 over Hanks. Brandon Cohn from Excalibur Stadium, thank you so much. Matadors leading the, the Hanks Knights, 17-14 in the second quarter. Let's head out to Eastwood's Trooper Stadium. Eastwood hosting Franklin at last check. Franklin creeping back into this game. Has Eastwood increased their lead? Let's go out to Steve Escajeda at Trooper Stadium. Steve. Oh, We've got 11.38 to go in the second quarter. It is now Eastwood 28 and Franklin 7. Uh, the big story tonight so far, Eastwood quarterback Evan Minjada is 6 out of 14 in the ball game for 197 yards in that first quarter. Three touchdown passes to three different receivers. Right now, Franklin just called a timeout there on the Eastwood one-yard line. Now, fourth and goal. They just called timeouts, so again, they're trying to get back to within two scores. Again, we just started the second quarter. Eastwood, 28, Franklin, 7. All right, Steve Escajeda, the call from Trooper Stadium. Once again, Franklin knocking on the end zone door, uh, but Eastwood leading this one 28-7 in the second quarter. Last check, this was El Dorado, the Ryan Estrada show at the Student Activities Complex. Let's go back out to J.D. Sursley for an update as El Dorado's hosting Montwood. El J.D. Yeah, it is definitely a strata show for El Dorado. El Dorado 21, Montwood 21, 3.45 left in the second quarter. Uh, Ryan Estrada, um, a 51 scamper uh, to the left side to make it 21. And then Montwood, uh, their very next drive, uh, Caleb Alvarez with a four-yard uh, four touchdown uh, pass 
uh, caught from Michael Southern, the quarterback, uh, to make it 21, Montwood, El Dorado 21, 323 left in the second quarter. All right, J.D. Sursley with a call tied at 21 between the Rams and the Aztecs. J.D., thank you very much. Let's head out to Irvin Memorial Stadium in Tony Shaw Field, host to Chapin, hosting El Paso High, and this one was all Chapin early on. Let's get an update from Zay Galindo. Zay? Thanks, guys. With 5.56 left in the second quarter, it's Chapin 35, El Paso High 0. And it's been the Evan Rivera show for the Huskies. The starting quarterback is 12 of 15, 165 yards, and three touchdowns today. The most recent one being to Davion Singleton from 21 yards out. So, once again, there's 545 left in the second quarter. It's Chapin 35, El Paso High 0. All right, Zay, thank you very much. Great job there. Wow, all Chapin all the time at Irvin Memorial Stadium, leading El Paso High 35 nothing in the second quarter. Let's head back out to Burgess Mustang Stadium. The Mustangs and the Andrus Eagles flying high. Jeremy Caranco with an update. Jeremy. 8.55 left to go in the second quarter, and it's Burgess leading Andrus 10-7. to Caleb Hanna just took off for a 72-yard touchdown run, puts him over the 1,000-yard mark on the season, 134 yards tonight, and the Andrus Eagles eventually turned it over again, and Burgess looks like they are striving again. So 8.37 left to go until halftime, and it's Burgess leading Andrus 10-7. to all right, Jeremy, thank you very much. 10-7, to 7, the Burgess Mustangs leading the Andrus Eagles in the second quarter. Let's head out to the Cotton Valley Classic, Fabens Wildcats hosting the Clint Lions. Let's join Angel Torres for an update there between Clint and Fabens. Angel. At halftime, the Clint Lions lead the Fabens Wildcats 6-0. to zero. Uh, Another fake punt by Clint inside their own territory gave Fabens a chance. But on the first play, Fabens fumbled the exchange and gave it right back before the Lions were unable to capitalize uh, right before halftime. So with the uh, uh, at halftime, the Clint Lions lead 6-0 over Fabens. All right, the fastest game of the night so far, at least. Fabens and Clint already to halftime. The Lions leading the Wildcats in the rivalry game 6-0 at halftime. Let's head out to Bel Air's Highlander Stadium. Bel Air hosting Horizon, a fun one here if you're a Highlander fan. It was all Bel Air in the first quarter. Let's see what we got from Bill Kuhn. Bill, take it away. One minute left in the first half. It is Bel Air Highlanders 19, Horizon 0. Horizon went on a drive after two turnovers by Bel Air, uh, but got nowhere, turned ball over on downs. So with about one minute left in the first quarter, it is Bel Air 19, uh, Horizon 0. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Great job out there. No scoring for the Bel Air Highlanders in the second quarter. Still lead it 19 nothing before halftime over the Horizon Scorpions. Let's go out to San Elie's. Eagle Stadium, San Elizario hosting Irving, and let's get an update from Ryan Vidalis. And this one, Ryan, take it away. With 33 seconds left until halftime, it is the Irvin Rockets 20 and the San Elizario Eagles 7. Uh, just a couple seconds ago, you had Zamar, I believe that Zamar Vargas uh, punching it in up the gut from a three yard run. Interesting note, uh, Zamar is San Elizario's first 1,000-yard rusher in the last 25 years. Once again, at Eagle Stadium, 25 seconds left till half. It is Urban Rockets 20 and the San Elizario Eagles 7. All right, Ryan Vidal is there right before halftime. The Rockets leading the Eagles 20-7 to in the second quarter. Let's head back out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week and an update from Adrian Broaddus between Austin and Bowie. A great game at R.E. McKee Stadium. Adrian, take it away. 143 left here in the first half. Austin up 6-3 over Bowie. Bowie was able to get a 35-yard field goal from their wide receiver and kicker, Antonio Ontiveros, off a muff punt. And that's how they capped off that drive. On the kickoff, it was one of their playmakers. I'm talking about Alan Mota, who came up with a kickoff uh, recovery or recovery on the kickoff. However, on the next drive, Bowie threw an interception and quarterback Abraham Carrasco was picked off at his own 20-yard line as they were driving right before the end of half. And a big play there by the Austin Panthers. I'll get you the name of the player who just intercepted him. It was actually Jeremiah Parrish who picked him off. 
132 left here in the first half. Great game in our 915 Tours game of the week. Austin up 6-3 over Bowie. All right, Adrian Broadus from our 915 Tours game of the week. 6-3, Austin over Bowie. Going to be a fun one there. Adrian, thank you very much. And just a couple of more addendums from our reporters out there at Excalibur Stadium. Jude Blanco on the scoreboard again this time from 27 yards out. Hanks back out on top of Parkland, 21 to 17. In uh, you know maybe it's uh, the last possession wins this one. <laughs> and oh by the way, Franklin uh, fourth and goal. Shea Smith quarterback sneak the Eastwood defense, which gives up so much yardage and so many points, stands up. And holds them out of the end zone. Eastwood takes charge at the one yard line. They still lead that one, twenty eight to seven. All right, uh, thank you very much, Paul, for that. Let's get. We have another halftime score from Canateo's Loewenberg Stadium. Canateo up over Jefferson, thirty to nothing at halftime. We also have some scores from out of town over in Austin. Cathedral trails Savio, twenty eight nothing at halftime. Last check, Monahans over. Mountain View 49 to 7. This game in the second quarter at Gadsden, the Panthers lead Deming 7 to 6. That late in the second quarter, that game for the district title, also for the district title at the Field of Dreams. Centennial Hawks lead Las Cruces High 21 13 late in the second quarter. We're going to take a break. Much more scores and highlights and updates. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night, the Week 10 edition. We've got some updates from all around town. Several games are at halftime, but let's head out to Eastwood's Trooper Stadium, get an update. Eastwood hosting Franklin. Let's get an update from Steve Escajeda. Steve. We've got 6.46 to go here in the second quarter. It is now Eastwood 28, Franklin 14. Uh, as Paul said earlier, yeah, uh, Franklin was stuffed at the uh, one-yard line on the post and goal. They did not score. Eastwood took it over. They could, they were three and out, couldn't do much with it, so they punted the ball. Franklin got the ball in midfield, took a couple of plays, but then quarterback Chase Smith from the 50-yard line ran it down the middle, then cut to the right side, down the sideline, untouched for a touchdown. That cut the lead to Eastwood again, 28, Franklin 14. Shea Smith, uh, the quarterback, not too much through the air in the ball game, only two out of six for 20 yards, but he has rushed for 71 yards on a couple of touchdowns, and he uh, single-handedly is keeping Franklin in the ball game. Uh, get Eastwood has the ball right now, right at the, uh, at the um, uh, Franklin 41-yard line, uh, but uh, there's a penalty on the play, so that'll drive them back a little bit. But we have still have a ball game, 6.27 to go here before halftime. It is Eastwood now, 28, Franklin 14. All right, Steve Escajeda from Trooper Stadium. Steve, thank you so much. And we got an update. Looks like the Rams get another quick touchdown just before halftime. Let's head out to J.D. Sursley at the Student Activities Complex for a quick update. J.D. Yeah, oh, man, Montwood 28, El Dorado 21. Um, We just went into half, but, yes, uh, Elijah Issa almost broke it for another touchdown, but he just got stopped. He has been, uh, you know, doing a good job for El Dorado uh, at quarterback, but the last uh, previous shot before halftime, um, they were driving uh, at their uh, their side of the end zone, and then he gets a little pressured, throws it a little too high, puts a little too much air on it, and then Derek Rojas, number 26, uh, linebacker four, Montwood Rams gets the interception, takes about takes it back about 22 yards, and then a methodical drive by Michael Southern, number one quarterback uh, at Montwood Rams, and he connects to Diego Osaka, number two wide receiver for a 16-yard touchdown. So Montwood takes the lead, 28, El Dorado 21, just now at half. All right, J.D. Sursley, thank you so much. We'll get your halftime report in just a little bit. Let's head out to some live action over at Hank's Excalibur Stadium. Let's join the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update on Parkland at Hank's. Brandon. 2.33 left in the opening half. A lot of scoring as Hank's has, uh, rather, Parkland has regained the lead 24-21 over Hank's. Hank's driving, though, at the Parkland 40. At the 5.42 mark of the second, Hank strikes yet again. This time, their quarterback, Porras, finds his bread-and-butter wideout, Jay Blanco, for a 27-yard touchdown. Blanco, an incredible first half, six receptions, 155 yards, two touchdowns, making the score Hank's 21-17 over Parkland. Then at the 2.52 mark of the second, Parkland quarterback, Ortiz, there was a 12-yard touchdown to his wideout, Jesus Molina. PAT was good, making a score Parkland 24-21 over Hanks. And as I'm speaking right now, it is Hanks that has gotten all the way down to the 32-yard line. That was a six-yard completion from their quarterback, Porras. It looks like it was Blanco again, and Blanco has been the man of the evening. That will bring up a third down here with a minute 57 to go. Actually, I take that back. It's a fourth down, a fourth and six at the 35-yard line of Parkland. So they will indeed go for it, and why not? They've been nearly unstoppable offensively this evening. Marcus Porras is 9 of 12, 184 yards, three total touchdowns. Here we go, fourth and six. Porras in the gun, has two receivers to his left, looking to the right, has a man to the right, and it's caught complete. And that's his receiver. That's Jude Blanco, who goes out of bounds at the 18-yard line. They will convert that first down play. So now it'll be first and 10 for Hanks at the Parkland 18-yard line. Again, Hanks trying to regain the lead. This has been a seesaw back-and-forth epic game here in far northeast El Paso. As right now, it's porous. Coming into the game, over 2,000 yards through the air, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions. Porras in the gun, empty backfield, hands it off to his running back, and he's looking to the left and gets all the way to the 12-yard line. And it was actually Michael Oliver who had nearly 700 yards on the ground coming into tonight. Oliver, 
eight carries, 43 yards thus far this evening. That will right. bring up a second and three. That was a Okay, game Brandon, seven. we're going to come back to you for the halftime report in just a little bit, but thank you for that update. And once again, it's 24-21 in late in the second quarter. Parkland leading Hanks right now. Let's go uh, to our Ignitify local scoreboard and our 915 Tours Game of the Week. The Austin Panthers leading the Bowie Bears 6-3. to three. Down at the reservation, Dovai leading Isleta 7-6. to six. And once again, Parkland leading Hanks 24-21. Over in 6A, Eastwood leads Franklin 28-14. Meanwhile, Montwood leads El Dorado 28-21 that game at halftime. Uh, down in 5A, Chapin leading El Paso High 35-0. Burgess leads Andrus 10-7. Bel Air leading Horizon 19 nothing, and Canatea leading Jefferson 30 to nothing at halftime. Down in 4A in the Cotton Valley Classic, Clint leading Fabin 6 to nothing at halftime. Meanwhile, Irvin leads San Elizario 20 to 7 at halftime. Savio leads Cathedral 28 nothing, and down in Monahans in 4A, Monahans all over Mountain View 69 to 7 that in the fourth quarter. And in the land of enchantment, last check, Centennial leading Las Cruces High, 21-13. And at halftime, Gadsden leads Deming, 10-6. Once again, we're going to take a break. We're going to have your halftime reports. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night, Week 10 edition of Football Friday Night High School Football in the land of enchantment in West Texas. We've got some games at halftime, some not creeping into halftime right now, plus a fun one between Parkland and Hanks. Let's go to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update of Parkland and Hanks as this is inching towards halftime. Brandon, what do you got for us? Eight seconds to go till the half, and Parkland 24-21 over Hanks at the 37-second mark here of the first half. Hanks driving all the way down to the five, converting a huge fourth down. Then quarterback Horace makes his first goof of the game and throws an interception in the end zone, picked by Parkland's Fabian Cervantes. And, of course, Parkland, they're close to midfield right now. They're going to take one last shot just to see if maybe they can throw a Hail Mary Quarterback looking and throwing down to around the 20, goes out of bounds, and that'll do it for the first half. Epic first half, folks, as we have come to the half, and that score remains the Parkland 24, 21 over Hanks. All right, Brandon Cohn, the Iceman. We'll get to your halftime report in just a little bit. And uh, once again, Parkland leading Hanks 24-21. This is a back-and-forth affair, an exciting game there at Hanks Excalibur Stadium. Another exciting game starting in the second quarter, no score after the first quarter between Delvai and Isleta. For an update, let's go to Joe Rodriguez. Joe. One minute to go in the second quarter, and it is Isleta leading Delvai by the score of 14-7. to seven. A 10-play, 68-yard drive ended with Evan Martinez, the quarterback for Isleta, Taking it to the house on a nine-yard touchdown quarterback keeper. The Isleta Indians went for two, and they converted. That was with one minute and 20 seconds left to go in the second quarter. It is important to note that Evan Martinez came off the field hurt once again after he scored on a touchdown. I'm going to send it back to you all with one minute to go in the second quarter. It is Isleta leading Del Valle by the score of 14-7. to all right, Paul, let's bring you in here. This is good. this could be a big upset. Once again, remember, Del Valle, uh could clinch uh, a share of the district title with a win tonight, but here comes Isleta. Isleta defeated Riverside earlier in the year. They're sort of as uh, the, the takedown of, of the, the big guys, the big dogs, and here you look at it again, 14-7 to over Del Valle at Hutchins Stadium. Here come the Indians. And you throw Bel Air, Air in there as well, and I think uh, you know the one uh, commonality – the way the Isleta defense is playing. Remember what they did to Bel Air the, the week after uh, uh, Noy Moreno threw for, I think it was 450 yards. Uh, Chris Davis caught seven balls, I think, for 200 plus yards in a win over the Hanks Knights, the Hanks Knights that are in a battle with uh, Parkland currently back and forth. Uh, just nothing, you know? And they're doing the same thing tonight against Del Valle. We mentioned Shelton Fuller. Uh, I don't think Brandon's mentioned it yet, but I'm sure he's not on the field, uh, injured last week. Uh, so he's, he's going to be down for a bit, but uh, uh, that's part of it. But Del Valle is still loaded with you know Jonathan Estrada and uh, the Lopez kid, uh, Archuleta, who has a touchdown run tonight. But the Asleta defense is finding a way again to get it done. As I said, the Bel Air game, uh, I think Moreno only threw for 112 yards. So so from 450 to 112, and at least early on in this one against what's got to be the best 5A team in the city, <laughs> unless it's Esleta, I guess we'll find that out tonight. Absolutely. Uh, they're doing it, especially the defense, they're doing it again. Evan Martinez in and out of the lineup. Remember he missed a game a couple of weeks ago. You know, So whatever he's uh, suffering with, uh, I think it's something that lingers. And he's, uh, he's in and out of the lineup, same way we saw with the, the Carrillo kid from, uh, from uh, Parkland last week. You know? Very come much come so. on for a few plays and then go off until you know, I feel like uh, you know, getting a couple more snaps. Very much so. Remember, Isleta owns a 21-14 victory over the Bel Air Highlanders uh, earlier this season. So Isleta very capable of knocking off the big dogs. Once again, leading 14-7. to We'll have Be- uh, Joe Rodriguez's halftime report in just a little bit. Speaking of halftime reports, it's that time. Your halftime report brought to you by Prep 1 and 600 ESP in El Paso. Let's go out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Join Adrian Broadus for this halftime report. Adrian. Thank you guys very much out here in central El Paso at R.A. McKee Stadium. The Austin Panthers currently lead the Bowie Bears 6-3 to three at halftime. We're about 16 minutes here on senior night with recognitions going on right now. And in this game, it's pretty much been back and forth, pretty evenly matched. Aside from the opening eight-play, 86-yard uh, drive that ended in a Ruben Bustillo's four-yard rushing touchdown for the Austin Panthers, 
both teams have had their struggles on offense. In fact, Bowie uh, trails Austin in this one, and uh, you just look at them on, on offense. 64 yards of total offense on 18 plays. Their quarterback, Abraham Carrasco, 4 of 8 for 47 passing yards, but he has that interception in this game. It was really Antonio Ontiveros, who has catches from 15 yards out and 12 yards out, who set up the Bears in prime position. He punted uh, what was probably a 45-yard boot to Austin, and it was Andrew Andujo who was unable to field it in the second quarter, which led to Bowie uh, falling on that muff punt. Kevin Hernandez on that one. It was a 35-yard field goal thanks to Antonio Ontiveros, who got them on the board here in the first half. But other than that, struggling on offense are the Bowie Bears. You look on the Austin Panthers side of the ball, Anakin Torres, 3 of 8 through the air, 95 Passing yards, their running back, Ruben Bustillos, eight carries, 35 rushing yards, and a touchdown. You also look at Oscar Flores, who's having a great game tonight. Six carries, 47 rushing yards, leading the Panthers on the ground. They have 198 total yards of offense, getting 103 on the ground tonight. Uh, the Austin Panthers, they've been the story offensively, just unable to punch it in on two separate occasions. They were stopped on fourth and goal in the first quarter, stopped on fourth and goal in the second quarter. Uh, and that's credit to that buoy defense and the way that they're holding on the goal line. So I'll send it back to you guys. 13 minutes left here in uh, the halftime festivities on senior night. Austin currently leading Bowie 6-3. to three. All right. Adrian Broaddus, thank you very much for that halftime report. Once again, remember, Adrian Broaddus over at our 915 Tours Game of the Week. 915 Tours is a division of Classic Elegance Coaches for Dallas Cowboy packages, including round-trip travel, hotel stay, fan experience tailgates, meet and greet with a player, and, of course, your ticket to watch the Cowboys, 915tours.com. As you just heard, Austin leading Bowie 6-3 at halftime. This is going to be a slugfest, but the Bowie defense has really kept themselves in it. And if I'm that buoy coaching staff, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, you know, as we talked about, seven-game win streak, you're a confident team, but you're not really that confident. This is a team you hasn't, haven't beaten, I think, uh, we decided since two, uh, 2016. Austin's, you know, the big bad brother, and, uh, you know, they find a way to beat you up every year. So I don't, I don't think Bowie, uh, whether it's players, coaching staff, throw them all in, in the same boat, uh, come into this one really confidently. But first half is done. It's a three-point game. Your boy Anaveros, uh, I think the best athlete on that team, hit a 35-yard field goal to cut the lead in half. And you are right there with 24 minutes to play. You've been winning games all season long. I, I, I think the confidence. I think they're a more confident team coming out for the second half than uh, maybe they were when they uh, kicked this thing off. Absolutely. Hey, let's head over to 6A now. Enjoy J.D. Sursley at the Student Activities Complex halftime between the Montwood Rams and El Dorado Aztecs. For this halftime report, let's go to J.D. Sursley at the SAC. J.D. Yes, a good one at halftime. Montwood Rams 28, El Dorado Aztecs 21. Uh, Michael Southern 147 yards passing so far uh, with two touchdowns, three touchdowns, I uh, beg your pardon. And then Diego Osaka, Mr. Do-It-All for the Montwood Rams, uh, catching and running. He's the one who caught the last uh, touchdown to make it 28. Uh, it was a 16-yard pass. And then Derek Rojas with the interception to actually lead, uh, start that drive that led to that touchdown. El Dorado, of course, Ryan Estrada averaging 112, being back from injury and all that, um, definitely has already surpassed his average per game. He's at 140 yards with two touchdowns. Elijah Etho also threw a, an amazing, uh, a nice-looking 28-yard uh, pass to running back Albert Rabb. But um, uh, trying to get the upset, you know, trying to take down the uh, uh, Montwood Rams, the little things, the, the keys to the car. You don't want to, you know, do something that'll hurt it. Elijah Etho just uh, air, put a little too much air on one of his passes that led to that interception because they were driving to take their lead, but obviously flip of the switch. Uh, Derek Rojas intercepts it right before half. Uh, Montwood Rams do a, a beautiful two-minute drill to make it 28. So Montwood, 28, El Dorado, 21 at halftime. All right, J.D. Sursley, thank you very much for that update. We also have an update from the Franklin-Eastwood game. Last check, I believe, Paul, you said oh, 31-21. The Eastwood Troopers leading the Franklin Cougars, so the Cougars making it a 10-point game just before halftime. 
<laughs> yeah, like like we said, uh, you know, if you're playing Eastwood, doesn't matter how good they are, doesn't matter how much you struggle this year, you're going to be in a game until probably uh, I don't know the last eight minutes of the contest, and then uh, as has typically been the case this year, Eastwood makes a couple of plays and they go home with an arrow victory. And let's head out to Irvin Memorial Stadium. It's been all Chapin Huskies over the El Paso High Tigers for this halftime report. Let's go out to Zay Galindo at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Zay. Thanks, guys. It's all Chapin here at Irvin Memorial Stadium, where at halftime the Huskies lead the El Paso High Tigers 45-0. to And Evan Rivera got the start at quarterback for Chapin tonight. He's had a pretty good game. He's 17 of 22. 225 yards, four touchdown passes, and one interception. He spread the love. Over six re- six receivers have caught reception from Rivera today, his favorite being Davion Singleton, the very electric athlete. He has five receptions, 68 yards, and one touchdown. Meanwhile, Brandon Ortega has taken all the carries for Chapin. He has had a great game, eight attempts, 121 yards, and a 13-yard touchdown with, with about two minutes left in the second quarter. Meanwhile, for El Paso High, they've been unable to get much going offensively. Their quarterback, Martin Gonzalez, he is 3 of 12, only nine yards and two interceptions. Meanwhile, their running back, Chris Valenzuela, he's had a couple of nice carries, but overall it's only 10 attempts, 32 yards and only 42 total yards offensively for El Paso High. So once again, at halftime, it's shaping 45, El Paso High 0. All right, Zay Galindo with a call there from Irvin Memorial Stadium. Chapin leading El Paso High, 45 nothing. For this halftime report over at Burgess Mustang Stadium, a set out to Jeremy Caranco. Last check, it was 10-7. to Burgess over Andrus. Can the Mustangs hang on? For this halftime report, let's go to Jeremy Caranco. Jeremy. We have just reached halftime here as Andrus has taken a 14-10 to lead over Burgess. Uh, as um, Right before the half, it was Jadon Urbina hitting Eric Bolcher for a 15-yard touchdown pass with 30 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Uh, we've had multiple issues out the night with the scoreboard, so we have to, uh, a little bit behind here, but uh, they have resumed play and they've just gone to halftime. So kicking off the night for Burgess, uh, David... Daniel Guillen with a 38-yard field goal with four minutes left to go in the first quarter off uh, interception by Javier Beltran set up that first score of the night, and Andrews responded. Marcus Wilson had a 45-yard dash to inside the five to the four, and in the next play, Marcus Wilson again punches it in for a four-yard touchdown at the time, and Andrews took a 7-3 lead with two minutes left to go in the first quarter, and Burgess did respond on their next drive. It was Caleb Hanna with a 72-yard touchdown run to put him over the 1,000-yard mark on the season. And the senior having a great senior night thus far with 158 yards and that touchdown on the night. For the Andrews Eagles, we know we have two quarterbacks switching in and out throughout the season. Vincent Gonzalez, the sophomore and the junior, Jadon Urbina, who had a touchdown pass just as we entered the half. He is 4 out of 10 for 84 yards with a touchdown and an interception. And on the ground, Marcus Wilson, 70 yards on 12 carries and a touchdown. And Eric Bolter leading the receiving core with 37 yards and a score. So halftime in a close game here at Burgess Mustang Stadium. It is Andrus leading Burgess 14 to 10. All right, Jeremy Caranco, that game just went to halftime. Jeremy, thank you very much. 14 to 10. Big game for the Andrews Eagles and the Burgess Mustangs there at Burgess Mustang Stadium. Hey, let's head out to the Cotton Valley Classic. Angel Torres with a 6 nothing Clint lead over Fabens. Angel has this halftime report. Angel, take it away. That is correct. At halftime, Clint still leads Fabens 6-0. Uh, Fabens was supposed to receive the second half kickoff, but a short kick turns into an onside recovery for Clint. Uh, the only score so far uh, from Clint has been a 12-yard touchdown run from running back uh, Zach Delgado. And uh, currently we have Clint inside of the red zone just right after the half. Um, like I said, uh, uh, time remaining is 7-11 with Clint leading the uh, Fabians Wildcats 6-0. All right, Angel Torres with that halftime report. Thank you very much. Third uh, third quarter just underway there at Fabens Wildcat Stadium. Let's head out to Bel Air's Highlander Stadium. Bel Air's offense sort of stalled there in the second quarter against the Horizon Scorpions. For this halftime report, let's go out to Bill Kuhn at Highlander Stadium. Bill. 
a starting of the third quarter here is Bel Air 19, Horizon 0. Halftime stats, uh, Bel Air ended halftime with 251 total yards, 67 yards from running. Noah Moreno has 45 of those 67 yards uh, on the passing side. Uh, you've got 118 yards for Christian or Davis, and total yards on passing is 184. Horizon, they got a whopping 55 yards. Uh, uh, it's been a long night for Horizon so far. So starting of the third quarter here at Bel Air Highlander Stadium, it is Bel Air 19, Horizon 0. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Third quarter, they're underway at Highlander Stadium. Let's head out to San Elizario's Eagle Stadium. San Elizario having a tough time with the Irvin Rockets. Let's go out to Ryan Vidalas for this halftime report, report between Irvin and San Eli. Ryan. Just coming out of the half here at the Eagle Stadium, it is the Irvin Rockets 20 and the San Elizario Eagles 7. Urban has had, not had to do too, too much on offense today. Quarterback Dallas Medina has kind of been lights out. He went four for eight for 97 yards in the first half and one touchdown. Wide receiver Jamal Rocha had one catch for 54 yards and one touchdown. And running back Israel Martinez scored two touchdowns on his own with three carries and 12 yards. Uh, Angel Rodriguez, like I had mentioned earlier, had the big plays on defense, creating two block punts, which, sets, which basically set up easy fields for the Rockets and easy scores. That's not to say the Eagles haven't been able to move the ball with their triple, op- triple option offense. They've actually gotten multiple people involved in their offense, but what's really killed them today is penalties. In the first half, they had eight penalties for 60, y- for 60 yards, which has really set them back. I mentioned earlier, running back Zamar Vargas being the first 1,000-yard running back in San Elizario's uh, last 25 years. He has 11 carries for 78 yards in the first half with one touchdown, and running back Junior Garcia has five carries for 44 yards uh, in that first half. Uh, Once again, uh, the half, uh, just coming out of the half, here at Eagle Stadium, it is Urban Rockets 20 and the San Elizario Eagles 7. All right. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, third quarter is about to start there at Eagle Stadium. Thank you so much. 20-7, to 7, Irvin over San Elizario. And let's head out to Trooper Stadium with this update between Eastwood and Franklin. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda for the update. Steve. Well, in the shocking score of the night, we're at halftime here at Eastwood. It's now the Eastwood Troopers 31 and the Franklin uh, Cougars 28. Believe it or not, Eastwood raced out to a 21 nothing lead halfway through the first quarter and 28-7 to at halftime. I mean, I'm sorry, at the end of the first quarter, but Franklin has battled back for unbelievably 31-28. Uh, it's been the Shea Smith show, the quarterback for Franklin in the second quarter, and it's been a tale of two quarters here. Eastwood, again, up 28-7 to in the first quarter. Franklin outscored him 21-3 to in the second quarter. And uh, thanks to Shea Smith, Franklin's quarterback, four rushing touchdowns uh, in the ball game just to keep them alive. Uh, he's 5 out of 11 at halftime passing for 95 yards, but he's carried the ball 13 times for 112 yards, and again, four big touchdown runs to keep the uh, Cougars in the ballgame. For the uh, Eastwood Troopers, uh, they've been uh, been led by their quarterback, Evan Mijares. Uh, He's been doing it uh, with his arm and his legs. Uh, Eight out of 18 through the air for 242 yards, three touchdown passes to three different receivers, He's also rushed for 87 yards and another score. And uh, those receivers that have cut touchdowns are Rudy Garcia, uh, uh, Fabian uh, Penazola, and uh, Evan Macias. Uh, Garcia, four catches, 146 yards in that first half uh, to lead the Troopers. And as we said, uh, to lead things off, Eastwood again could uh, clinch first place in District 16A with a victory. And at the end of the first quarter, when they were up 28-7, to that looked like a moot point, but I'm telling you right now, uh, this game is uh, totally, totally in doubt. Again, it's halftime here on the east side. Franklin not giving up at all. Eastwood holding on to a slim 31-28 to lead. Wow. It seems like Steve gets these every week, doesn't he, Steve? Thank you so much. 
what what a comeback so far in the second quarter for the Franklin Cougars, making it just a three point game at halftime. It just makes me laugh that you sound surprised. <laughs> I mean, did I not say this last week? Oh, bad news. Franklin gets the Eastwood Troopers. Good news. They get the Eastwood Troopers because whoever plays Eastwood, they're going to be around in the fourth quarter. 21 to nothing. I, I didn't even sweat a little bit. And here comes Franklin, a uh, 10 point game. Oh, by the way, from uh, the Clint Fabens contest, Clint's starting to open things up a little bit. Uh, Colin Ivy knocks in from uh, a yard out. Uh, I believe that's. Uh, 13, well, they don't make extra points out there, so nonspecific. I'm going to say at least 12 to nothing. Clint uh, uh, leads Fabens. And all that's, this is going to do is get uh, Clint their second win in the district, same spot they were in a year ago. Uh, remember when they got uh, tie-breaked out of the, uh, uh, out of the playoffs. Uh, uh, Mountain View tonight uh, went up to Monahans and got hammered 69-13. to They kept their best player, uh, Al- uh Alex Leva, Alejandro Leva, out of that contest, a little dinged up in the, in the uh, Clint game, the 17-14 loss from uh, a week ago. They're resting him up for the big Pecos game. Pecos comes to Mountain View next week, next Friday. And remember, this is the same scenario exactly. Uh, Mountain View pulled the upset last year in Pecos, and they beat them by, I want to say, five or six points. At, by the same token, Clint had beaten Mountain View by one point, and then you go to point differential to break the three-way tie amongst those three teams, Pecos, Mountain View, and Clint. The same thing could happen again this year. So keep in mind, when Clint beat Mountain View, it was 17-14. to 14. They won by three points. That gives uh, Clint a plus three on the point differential, Mountain View a minus three. Pecos beat Clint last week, come from behind in overtime, beat him by six points. So now Pecos is a plus six. Clint, which was a plus three, is now a minus three. And there is Mountain View still sitting at minus three, which means if everything stays the way it is, even if Clint gets the victory tonight, uh, they finish with, uh, is it Monahans they finish with? Yeah, it is, uh, because they open with Fort Stockton. So they got a tough go at Monahans. I believe that's correct. Yeah, Clint hosts Monahans next week. Wow. <laughs> well, at least they get a host of Monahans is a monster, as every other team has found out. But uh, the situation will be all, all, all Monahan, uh, Mountain View excuse me, is going to have to do is beat Pecos, and that'll change their minus three to a minus two, even if it's by one point. And there sits Clint at uh, minus three, and they could get nosed, or should I say hosed, out of a playoff spot for the second time. Remember, they had a 14-year run in the playoffs before uh, getting knocked out at the last minute last season. Well, we'll see if, if Clint can hold on tonight. Once again, Clint leads Fabens 6 nothing to halftime. Speaking of 4A, Mountain View falls to Monahans. This is a final. 69-13, Monahans defeats Mountain View down in Monahans. Uh, we also have halftime scores from the Land of Enchantment. Centennial leads Las Cruces High 21-13, and Gadsden leads Deming 10-6. We just go to half over at the reservation, Del Valle at Isleta. With this halftime report, let's go to Joe Rodriguez. Joe. Thank you very much, Bo. Halftime here at the reservation, and it is all tied up between the Isleta Indians and the Valle Conquistadores by the score of 14 to 14. Quarterback Jake Fitty with one second left on the clock, takes the snap, scrambles, 40 yard touchdown run. He pretty much covered about maybe 55 to 60 yards in those 40 yards, scrambling all over the place. The Isleta defense was not able to hold him, which brings us to where we're at right now. And I got to say, Del Valle is still trying, kind of shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, the biggest statistic that stands out in the first half is they have. Uh, eight penalties for 65 yards. They do have two turnovers, which has allowed Isleta to capitalize and keep themselves in the game. For the Del Valle Conquistadores, they have seven first downs. They ran the ball 14 times for 158 yards. Quarterback Fede is 6 for 12 with one interception for 63 yards, a total of 221 offensive yards. Tonight and the uh, Conquistadores do have one fumble for a total of two turnovers in the first half. Coach Contreras definitely cannot be happy about that. Over on the Atleta side of things, they have eight first downs. They've run the ball 16 times for 72 yards. Quarterback Evan Martinez is 6 for 11 for 43 yards for a grand total of 115 offensive yards. They do have four penalties for 
23 yards, which is all setting up for an exciting second half here at the reservation. A little bit more than five minutes away. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you on the studio where it is Delia and Isleta tied at the reservation by the score of 14-14. to All right, Joe Rodriguez, thank you very much. Great job out there. What a game between Del Valle and Isleta. Speaking of that district, what a game between Parkland and Hanks. We got some close ones out there. Parkland leading Hanks just by 3, 24-21. So we got close games all over that district. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back with our Ignitify local scoreboard and head back out to our games and get score updates. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Welcome back to the creepy, crawly edition of spooky edition of Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. I'm Bo Bagley alongside Paul McKinnon, producer Angel Munoz. We're talking high school football, and we got scores all over the place. Uh, We have score updates. A lot of the games, though, at senior nights, all at halftime. So let's go through our Ignitify local scoreboard. Ignitify, your AC installation service provider. In our 915 Tours game in the night. Austin and Bowie, the Austin Panthers lead Bowie at halftime, 6-3. to three. Also at halftime, Del Valle and Isleta tied at 14. Speaking of that district, what a close district game we have tonight. 
Hanks and Parkland. Parkland leading Hanks by three, 24-21 at halftime. Let's go over to 6A. Franklin and Eastwood, we got a shootout at Trooper Stadium. The Eastwood Troopers leading Franklin 31-28 at halftime. Speaking of halftime, Montwood leading El Dorado 28-21. That also at the half. Let's go over to 5A. Chapin leading El Paso High 45-0 at halftime. Meanwhile, Andrus leading Burgess 14-10. And Canateo all over Jefferson 30-0. Horizon and Bel Air over at Highlander Stadium. Bel Air scoreless in the second quarter, but still leading Horizon 19-0 at halftime. Down at 4A. Clint leading Fabin 6 0 at the half. Irvin over Sanelli 20 7 at halftime. And it's a final down in Monahans. Monahans defeats Mountain View 69 13 also in that district. Fort Stockton defeated Pecos 28 7. The Land of Enchantment, Centennial leading Las Cruces at halftime 21 13. Now in the fourth quarter, Deming leading Gadsden 12 10. In the third quarter, Artesia Oliver Mayfield, 43-0. At halftime, Reagan County leading Anthony, 25-14. And it's a final down in Alpine. Alpine defeats Tornillo, 43-0. That is your Ignitify, local scoreboard Ignitify, your AC installation service. They're here to help. They have over 20 years of experience in El Paso and a five-star rating on Google. Don't take it from us. Call them today to set up an appointment. Ignitify is known for maintenance and repairs to your cooling system. Visit IgnitifyEP.com to get started today. That is your local scoreboard. Now here's Paul McKinnon with your out-of-town scoreboard. Bo, thanks a lot. Let's start with the District 26A, a big one in that district, uh, the Battle of the Midlands. Undefeated Midland High, 8 0 on the season, going up against Midland Legacy, 2 and 1. Midland 3 and 0 in the district. And it is Legacy, the home team, even though they're both uh, playing, they play their home games, uh, you know, same place. 49 31, Legacy up on Midland, trying to hand Midland High its first loss of the season. As I said, Legacy 2 and 1 in the district. So uh, they, they need this win uh, in a big way, and that's how they're playing. Elsewhere, Odessa High. Off to a nice start to the district. Stumbled as of late. Uh, looking to put back-to-back losses on the board. Uh, Wolford Friendship, just 1-2 and two in the district. But remember, they got off to a, a 5-0 and oh, uh, start to their season. 63-41, they lead Odessa High. Looking to even their record in the, in the district at 2-2, two and two, which is where Odessa would fall to with a loss. Odessa Permian, by the way, uh, up on uh, Central, 42-14. to Odessa Permian, the mojo, already with a couple of losses in that district. They cannot f- afford any more, remember, in the scheme of the big school, small school. The two Odessa schools are the big schools. So if o- Odessa High actually makes it into the playoffs this year and Permian sticks around, that means Midland Legacy will get pushed down into the, uh, the small school. And I would think uh, somebody who's going to be a number one seed there, like maybe those Eastwood Troopers, assuming they get past Franklin tonight in the, in the final 24 minutes. Uh, they wouldn't be crazy about that, I would think. But anyway, that's 2-6A. Let's jump to uh, 2-5A. Uh, Lubbock Cooper. Uh, Abilene's the, the beast of that district this year, but Lubbock Cooper right behind. 45-27. They take down Amarillo Tascosa in Amarillo to move to 4-1 and one in the district. Tascosa falls to 2-3, 3-6. and, three, three and six. On the uh, season, um, Abilene, uh, as we aforementioned, 24-14 up on Amarillo, looking to go to 6-0 and and finish their season at 8-2. and Amarillo has one loss in the district. Uh, this would be their second uh, to 2-5A Division Two. Abilene Wiley all over Paladuro, 33-3. Uh, Wiley looking to move to 6-3 and on the season, 3-1 and in the district. Paladuro at 1-2, and 3-4. and four. Wichita Falls Rider, this one already in the books. They moved to 4-0 and in the district with a 49-16 win over Plainview. They sit at 7-2 and two with a week to go. Plainview falls to 1-3, and 5-4. and four. And uh, Abilene Cooper, which has had a resurgence since district. This was a Thursday nighter all over Lubbock, sixty-one to seven as they moved to three and one in the district, four and five on the season to two four a Brownwood. Looking to finish their season at nine and one, up fourteen to six on Andrews. That's uh, headed to the fourth quarter. Lubbock Estacado. 
hoping to move to seven and two. Uh, I like their odds. Thirty-three to thirteen at uh, Big Spring. Both of those teams with one loss in their district, though. And uh, finally, District Two Four A Division Two Seminole seven and one, looking to move to eight and one, two and one in the district, all over Leveland, forty-five to nineteen. And Bo Bagley, that is your out-of-town scoreboard. All right, Paul McKinnon, thank you very much. The Sultan of Stats and the Sultan of Scores. That's our out-of-town scoreboard. We have another out-of-town score to, to give you. Las Cruces High has now taken the lead over Centennial. It's now 23-21, Cruces leading Centennial that in the third quarter. We're going to take a break, come back. We're going to have much more action. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. I've I've come to the conclusion that after Halloween 9 or whatever it was, I just don't see horror movies anymore, <laughs> that, apparently. Uh, from uh, Producer Angel Munoz was from Get Out. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I remember the movie that had me uh, sleepless nights for about a week, but I, I don't remember the song, but I remember the movie big time. 
Hey, we got score updates from all over town. Remember, we want to give you some final scores right now. Uh, out of town's final scores, Monahans defeats Mountain View 69-13. Fort Stockton defeated Pecos 28-7. And Alpine defeated Torneo 43-0. Uh, we got scores from all over town. Let's go out to J.D. Sursley and an update from the Student Activities Complex. Montwood at El Dorado. Let's go to J.D. for an update. J.D. All right, Montwood took the lead right before halftime, and now they are just going to continue this lead. It is Montwood 34, El Dorado 21. The first drive that Montwood had was a clinic uh, pass run uh, operation. And then Diego Osaka, the uh, all you can do, number two wide receiver for Montwood, scores a one yard touchdown. El Dorado on their drive ended up going backwards and then punted, and Montwood's on the drive again uh, at their own 40 38. And um, they are definitely taking over the game. Montwood 34, El Dorado 21, a minute and three seconds left in the third quarter. All right, J.D. Sersley with a the call there. Looking like Montwood's going to run away with this one, Paul. 34-21, Montwood leading El Dorado and the Rams with the ball late in the third quarter. Let's head out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week. A slim three-point lead for the Austin Panthers over the Bowie Bears. Let's head out to Adrian Broadus at R.E. McKee Stadium with this update. Adrian. Hey guys, it's 5.40 left here in the third quarter. Austin still leads Bowie 6-3. to three. The Bears drove it all the way down to the Panthers' 23-yard line. However, their drive just stalled on a fourth and six incompletion, um, and that was, at, again, at the Panthers' 23 or 29-yard line. And the way that they were able to get down here, it was a, you guessed it, uh, a big Antonio Antiveros fake punt uh, that he ended up hauling himself for 20 yards all the way up to the 50-yard line. Then he had a eight-yard catch on a third down play to move the chains as well for the Bears. However, their drive stalled right outside of the red zone, and the Austin Panthers will get the ball back. With 540 left here in the third quarter, Austin still leads Bowie 6-3 to here in our 915 Tours Game of the Week. All right, Adrian Broadus, thank you very much. 915 Tour is a division of classic elegance coaches providing the best travel packages from El Paso to Dallas or Cowboy home games. You get hotel stay, your ticket to the game, experience fan experience tailgate, and a meet and greet with a player. Go to 915tours.com. We have an exciting game out here at, at Hank's Excalibur Stadium. Brandon Cohn with a call. Hank's trailing Parkland by three points. Let's go to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update. Brandon. 9.57 to go here in the third quarter, and Parkland still leads 24-21. Let's give you some quick halftime stats. For Parkland, their quarterback, Eric Ortiz, went 9-14, 108 yards. He had one touchdown pass. Also, 10 carries for 45 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Running back Caleb Martinez, eight carries, 104 yards. And wide out, Fabian Cervantes, four receptions, 42 yards, and a crucial interception. Also wide out, Jesus Molina had a touchdown in their kicker. Adrian Loya, 42-yard field goal. On the other side, Hanks quarterback Marcus Porras went 9 of 13, 184 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, and a rushing touchdown as well. And wide out, Jude Blanco, the star of the first half, six receptions, 155 yards, two touchdowns. Also running back Michael Oliver, 10 carries for 53 yards. The punters, they have the cushiest gig tonight. Neither has actually been used on either side of these two teams here. It is 9.57 to go here in the third quarter after a little scuffle between these teams, officials talking about what's going on here. But anyways, there's some bad blood tonight as uh, Hanks, or rather Parkland, has a 24-21 lead over Hanks. Oh, sure to be a good one there at Hanks Excalibur Stadium. Brandon Cohn, thank you very much for that update. Looking forward to hear what uh, happens here in that game at Excalibur Stadium. Let's head out to the Cotton Valley Classic. It was just a 6 nothing lead for Clint over Fabens at halftime. Let's join Angel Torres for an update. Angel, take it away. We have 6-10 left in the fourth quarter. The Clint Lions have extended their lead 13-0 over the Fabians Wildcats. Clint recovered the opening kickoff to start the second half, which led to a one-yard touchdown plunge by number 20, Colin Ivey, who had 17 carries for 67 yards on the night already. 
Uh, the Lions attempted a short kick after their score, and once again they recovered the kickoff. But this time they were stopped on fourth and 13 in uh, in Wildcat territory. That was the third time Fabian stopped clean on fourth down tonight. Fabian's got the ball back for the first time in the second half with under a minute left. But Clint defensive back Aiden Avila intercepted a, uh, a Jesus Jimenez through heel pass, and that's where we stand currently. Uh, like I said before, uh, time remaining is 6-10 in the fourth quarter. Lions 13, Fabian's last half. All right, Angel Torres, thank you so much. The Cotton Valley Classic, Clint leading Fabens 13-0 at Fabens Wildcat Stadium. Let's head out to Bel Air's Highlander Stadium. Highlanders led Horizon 19-0 at halftime. Let's join Bill Kuhn for an update from Bel Air hosting Horizon. Bill. Ten minutes, eight seconds left in the game. It is Bel Air 33, Horizon 0. Horizon has taken the ball down in the Third quarter, spent seven minutes, but got absolutely no points out of that seven-minute carry. Uh, let me catch up on how Bel Air got here. Just, just a little bit ago, Noah Martinez runs the ball in for six yards for the touchdown, extra point, good. And right at the mid part of the third quarter, also Bel Air, Noah Martinez again, thirty-two yard run for a touchdown, extra point, good. So with about ten minutes left here in the game. It is Bel Air 33, Horizon 0. All right, Bill, thank you very much. 33 nothing. Bel Air finally getting off uh, the schneid there, only scoring in the first quarter, now getting 14 more in the third quarter to lead it, 33 nothing. Let's head out to San Elizario's Eagle Stadium. San Eli hosting Irving. Get this update from Ryan Vidalis. Ryan, take it away. With 9.31 left here at Eagle Stadium, is the Urban Rockets still with a slim lead by a score of 20 to 19? Just a few seconds ago, running, San Elizario running back uh, Zamar Vargas takes a carry 40 yards all the way to the house, breaking tackles, getting into the end zone. However, they missed the extra point, and that extra point could come back to haunt them. Right now, they're down by one point. However, one thing to note, Lamar Vargas has also just eclipsed the 200-yard mark in this game with two touchdowns. Once again, with 9.31 left here at Eagle Stadium, it is the Urban Rockets 20 and the San Elizario Eagles 19. What a, wow, what a game there. 20-19, to 19, just a one-point lead for the Urban Rockets that once led this game 20 to nothing in the first quarter. And for all the people that, uh, you know, complain about, uh, oh, everybody gets a trophy and, you know, I'm one of those. But these are the, are the times uh, that make that a lot more palatable, more tolerable. Two teams that have been dominated throughout the entire season. Tonight, they got a chance to go to the playoffs. And they're both playing hard and they're both trying to win. San Eli was down a couple of scores. You know, we got our one win this year. You know, we can just go away. It's last game of the season. Time to go on vacation. No. They're going to keep fighting, and they want to try and win this thing. And this is a terrific game to listen to and also for, you know, the folks in attendance. Uh, you know, they're rooting for their boys. Very much. And we got a live update from our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Let's go to Adrian Broadus with this update on Austin and Bowie. Adrian, take it away. What do you got for us? Hey guys, thank you. hey guys, thank you very much. Three sixteen left here at R. A. McKee Stadium. The Austin Panthers here on the board, pending a conversation here by the referees and the Bowie coaching coaching staff. It was a seventy yard pass from Austin quarterback Anakin Torres. He hit uh, wide receiver Andrew Andujo for a seventy yard touchdown pass. They converted on a key fourth and inches play on this drive. Uh, it was a little bit of a controversial spot, but nonetheless, the Panthers convert big on this one. This was also a second and 13 situation for the Panthers here, and Andujo was able to take it to the house, making two defenders miss, and uh, what a great run there by him. Pending the extra point here, could get uh, a two-point try as Austin's back onto the field. They lead Bowie 12-3, to 3-3. Three, three, uh, 16 left here in the third quarter, guys. I'll send it back your way, and uh, I'll shoot you guys the uh, final update on whether or not this extra point is good. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian. Uh, Austin High uh, sort of pulling away from the Bowie Bears, now leading by nine, 12 to 3, that in the third quarter, and our 915 Tours game of the week. That's going to be a fun one there. We'll keep you updated on Austin 
in Bowie. Let's head out to Chapin High School. The Chapin Huskies keep building their lead over the El Paso High Tigers. Let's join Zay Galindo for an update on Chapin hosting El Paso High. Zay. Thank you guys. With 10.41 left in the fourth quarter, it is Chapin 59 and El Paso High 7. Chris Valenzuela, El Paso High's running back, breaks off a 61-yard rush and he tops it off on the next play with a 12-yard touchdown run. It just put El Paso High on the board. And as for Chapin, it was Amari Welch scoring twice on the ground, one from 30 yards out, the other one from 10 yards out, to increase us his lead to 59-0 before the balance with a touchdown. So once again, with 10.08 left in the fourth quarter, it's Chapin 59, El Paso High 7. Thanks, guys. All right, Zay Galindo there at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Chapin up big, cruising right now, up 59-7, to that in the fourth quarter. And this from Brandon Cohn, uh, Parkland Hanks. Eric Ortiz, the QB, six-yard uh, TD. I'll actually uh, throw to Fabian Cervantes, a little six-yard hookup. Parkland, 8.59 left to play in the third quarter. Now up 10 on the Hanks Knights, 31-21. All right, that's a big lead for the Parkland, uh, the Parkland Matadors there at Excalibur Stadium. Let's get an update from the Burgess Mustangs hosting the Andrus Eagles. A slim four-point Andrus lead over Burgess. Let's get this update from Jeremy Caranco at Mustang Stadium. Jeremy. 8.30 left to go in the third quarter, and can you say perfect timing, guys? Uh, Caleb Hanna just runs in a seven-yard touchdown, and uh, pending the extra point, it's Burgess now has taken the lead over Andrews 16-14, to and causing the scoring drive was Diego Diaz, a sack of Andrews quarterback Jaden Urbina, fumbled the football. Diego Diaz recovered it at the 23 of Andrews, and... Two plays later, Caleb Hanna finds the end zone for the second time tonight for the Burgess Mustangs, who, with the win, put them in good position to get in the playoffs as the extra point is botched no good, no good. So Burgess will hold on to their two-point lead for now. So Caleb Hanna, again, 170 on the ground tonight, two scores, and puts his Mustangs on top. Andrews with the win, clinches the playoff, Burgess. With the win, put them in a good spot to make the playoffs as well with the matchup next week, taking on Jefferson. So 8.30 left to go in the third quarter. It is Burgess now leading Anders 16-14. to 14. All right, Jeremy, perfect timing is what we do here at Football Friday Night. Great timing there. Once again, a two-point lead for the Burgess Mustangs over the Andrus Eagles in the third quarter. 16-14, Burgess leading Andrus. Hey, we got a live update from Isleta's Hutchins Stadium. Let's go to Joe Rodriguez, Isleta hosting Del Valle. Joe, what do you got for us? Thank you very much, Bo. 5-13 to go in the third quarter, and Del Valle has just taken a 20-14 to Lead over the Isleta Indians. Correction, 20 to 16. I am sorry. 20 to 16 lead as the Delvalle Conquistadores went 48 yards over six plays with a two yard quarterback keeper by Jay Fede. His second touchdown, rushing touchdown of the night. The extra point was no good. It was blocked by Alonso Rodriguez, who took it back for the safety, making it 20 to 16 with Isleta about to get the ball. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio with 5.13 left to go in the third quarter. It is Del Valle leading Isleta by the score of 20-16. to 20-16, to 16, just a four-point lead for the Divide Conquistadors at Hutchins Stadium down on the reservation. What a game there between Del Valle and and Isleta. Remember, Isleta got some big upsets earlier in the year. They defeated Riverside. They defeated Bel Air. So uh, Isleta holding on there between uh, Delvay and Isleta. What a game there at Hutchins Stadium. Once again, remember, Parkland leading Hanks 31-21. Parkland seeming to pull away there. Let's see if the Hanks Knights can get back into that one and make it interesting. Over at Bel Air Highlander Stadium, Bel Air leading Horizon, 33 nothing. So, Bel Air looking good there. Might want to check that one. Uh, Mark Mukibi, a 47-yard TD pass, and knocked it up to 40 to nothing. And uh, J.J. Lopez, a uh, scoop and score, 11 yards out, 47 to nothing now. 8-14, I believe, left in the contest. I hope that's not the third quarter. 47-zip, Bel, Bel Air on top of Horizon. 47 nothing, really pouring it on right now over the Horizon Scorpions. Once again, we got a one-point game down at San Lozario. 
Irvin leading Senelli 20 to 19 should be a fun one. Clint only just a a two touchdown lead there over Fabens. It's just 13 nothing over Fabens that in the fourth quarter. And once again our 915 Tours game of the week. Austin leading Bowie 12 to 3. This has been a defensive slugfest. Both teams playing really well on defense, but Austin leading this 12 to 3 after a 70 yard touchdown pass from Andy Contoris. Uh 14 now. Adrian brought us. He told us to get back to us on that uh, extra point. Man of his word. So the two point conversion is good. So Austin leading Bowie 14 to 3. And one more from the sack. Uh, J.D. Sursley tells us Michael Southern to Caleb Alvarez again. Seven-yard TD pass this time. Montwood starting to open it up on El Dorado. 40-21, to they lead that. And remember, a Montwood win coupled with an Eastwood win. They were up 10, 31-21 at, at the half over uh, Franklin. Put those two together, and uh, the Montwood Rams clinched their first playoff berth since 20, 2020, COVID-2020. They were in the playoffs and not since. All right. 40 to 21. The Montwood Rams leading the El Dorado Aztecs that in the fourth quarter. We're going to take a break. Up next, our two minute drill. We'll head to all the games, give you scores from all around New Mexico and West Texas. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Oh, the 
Shining. I know that one as it gets Halloween time. Football Friday night right here, week 10. It's nearly time for our two-minute drill. Uh, Paul, you got to know that one. The Shining, Jack Nicholson. Nah, you know what? I was going to say the Spielberg flick. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, Shows man. what I know. Uh, the Shining, Jack Nicholson, Stephen King. Yeah, great always, movie. Scatman Crothers took one to the one, chest. Yeah. Hey, last check, Austin got a touchdown and a two-point conversion to increase their lead uh, in our 915 Tours Game of the Week over the Bowie Bears. Now time for our two-minute drill. Let's head to Ari McKee Stadium. Join Adrian Bratis for this update on Austin and Bowie. Adrian. Start of the fourth quarter here. Austin still leading Bowie 14-3. to However, the Bears all the way down to the uh, nine-yard line of the Austin Panthers. They are threatening to score. Thanks to a couple nice passes from their quarterback, Abraham Carrasco. He hit his wide out in Kevin Hernandez from passes for 13 yards out, 20 yards out, and now they're all the way threatening in a second and goal situation. Sending it back to you guys, start of the fourth quarter out here at Army Key Stadium, Austin leading Bowie 14 to 3. All right, Adrian brought us from our 915 Tours game of the week. Thank you very much. Austin leading Bowie. 14-3 to in the fourth quarter. Us and how to Joe Rodriguez at Hutchins Stadium, a tight game between Delvai and the Isleta Indians. Joe, what's the update there? One minute to go in the third quarter, and it is Delvai leading each other by the score of 20-16. to Right now we have a fourth and five going on at the Isleta 35-yard line for Del Valle. Del Valle, the Conquistadores are going for it on fourth and fifth. Going to go ahead and send it back to you on the studio with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's Del Valle leading the Isleta by the score of 20 to 16. All right, Joe Rodriguez from Isleta High School. Del Valle leading Isleta 20 to 16 in the third quarter. Let's head out to Hanks Excalibur Stadium. Hanks hosting Parkland, and let's get this update from Brandon Cohn. Brandon. Left here in the third quarter, Parkland with 31 to 27 over Hanks at the 8:59 mark of the third. Parkland marching down the field again, getting a five-yard face mask penalty, and then quarterback Ortiz then gets a six-yard touchdown toss to wideout Fabian Cervantes that made the score 20, 31-21. Uh, Parkland over Hanks, and at the 4:34 mark of the third, Hanks driving down the field on their own, and that drive accumulates in a four-yard touchdown run by Michael Oliver although the PAT was blocked. We have one minute to go here, one thirty actually, to go in the third quarter, and it is Parkland 31-27 to over Hanks. All right, Brandon Cohn, the Iceman, thank you very much. We got another good one between Delvay and Isleta, Parkland, Hanks. This district is always fun. 31-27, Parkland leading Hanks at the end of the third quarter. A shout out to Steve Escajeda at Trooper Stadium. Franklin really storming back in that second quarter to make it a game against the Eastwood Troopers. Let's head out to Trooper Stadium and join Steve with this update. Steve. We've got 3.59 to go in the third quarter. Eastwood still holding on to a 31-28 lead over the Franklin Cougars. And oh, what might have been. Franklin had the ball on the Eastwood 49-yard line. Quarterback Shea Smith just a while ago broke free and had an uncontested touchdown run. Going to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's hit from behind, fumbles the ball out through the and out through the end zone, and it's a touchback to Eastwood. They took over on the 20-yard line. Oh, the Franklin Cougars could have taken the lead. 3:53 now to go in the third quarter. Eastwood 31, Franklin 28. Wow, the Franklin Cougars with a fantastic shot right there, but Troopers with a nice job punching that ball out. Goes through the end zone in a touchback Eastwood Trooper ball. Franklin did this once before. Remember the Montwood game? A big uh, three-score lead, I think, after a scoop and score got him down. Came all the way back only for Caleb Olivares to put him away with a 15-yard TD late. We'll see if they can turn uh, those tables this time against maybe the best team in the city. Absolutely. Once again, 31-28 Eastwood leading Franklin towards the end of the third quarter. Let's head out to the Student Activities Complex. Montwood increasing their lead over El Dorado. Let's get an update from J.D. Sursley from the SAC. J.D. All right. El Dorado is definitely losing the composure with back-to-back uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Uh, Montwood's just uh, having their way, ramming them right now. Um, it is 41, Montwood, El Dorado 21 now, four minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Uh, Caleb Alvarez was the last one to score a touchdown pass from Michael Southern of Montwood. 
Um, he is now at uh, what, four total touchdowns for Michael Southern. Uh, Montwood, 41, El Dorado, 21, 430 left in the fourth quarter. All right, J.D. Sursley, what a game there. A 20-point lead for the Montwood Rams over the El Dorado Aztecs, 41-21. Rams lead in the fourth quarter. Let's head out to Chapin's, uh, Chapin's home game against El Paso High School. This game taking place at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Let's join Zay Galindo for this update. It's, it's a haul Chapin all night long. Zay, what do you got for us? Thanks, guys. Final here at Urban Memorial. Chapin wins 66-7, to and with about 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Hunter Standifer takes the handoff two yards into the end zone to cap off the Husky win. So once again, final from Urban Memorial. Chapin, 66. El Paso High, 7. Thanks, guys. All right, Zay, thank you very much. We'll hit you up here in a few minutes, get those uh, final uh, stats from you. Uh, uh, let's go out to Burgess Mustang Stadium. Burgess with a slim two-point lead over the Andrus Eagles. Let's go out to Jeremy Caranco for an update. Jeremy. 3.59 left to go in the third quarter, and Burgess leading Andrus 16-14 to as Caleb Hanna is having himself a great senior night. And a great career to put at that. 241 yards on 18 carries and two scores, and he just took off for a 74-yard run in that. Burgess Mustangs are threatening again to score. So we have 355 left to go in the third quarter. It is Burgess 16 and Andrews 14. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. What a game there. Hey, we got a live update from our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Let's head out to Adrian Broaddus over at R.E. McKee Stadium with his update as Austin's hosting the Bowie Bears. Adrian, what do you got for us? 11.45 left here in this one. Austin still leads Bowie, but the Bears on the board. It's now 14-9. to nine. Bears cap off a long drive, which was set up by some nice passes from quarterback Abraham Carrasco from 20 yards out, from 13 yards out, out to his receiver on this drive, Kevin Hernandez. That set up what was a four-yard rushing touchdown by Alan Mota, from the Bowie Bears. So he now has a rushing touchdown. He put one on the board. However, the two-point conversion was no good. 11.45 left here in the fourth quarter. Bowie is back in this one, makes it a one-score game. Uh, Austin still leads 14-9 to here on our 915 Tours Game of the Week. All right, Adrian, thank you very much. What a game there. A five-point game, Austin leading Bowie 14-9 to in the fourth quarter. We'll certainly keep up. Keep you up to date on that game. Adrian, thank you very much. Hey, let's head back out to the Cotton Valley Classic. Join Angel Torres. Last check, it was a 13-0 lead for the Clint Lions over the Fabens Wildcats. Angel, what do you got for us? It is a final. Clint has defeated Fabens 28-7. So Clint running back Zach Delgado threw a 12-yard touchdown pass to Brock Botwell, making it 21-0 Lions. Fabens finally answered with a 53-yard touchdown pass from Eric Ortiz to Javier Hernandez, which made it 21-7. But Clint responded with a six-yard touchdown run by Colin Ivey, his second of the day and tenth of the season, which closed out Fabens. Uh, for Fabens, um, uh, they needed, excuse me, for Clint, Clint needed a, at least to clinch a win to, to get a playoff spot. Um, and they have not lost a Fabian since week seven of 2017 when they lost 47-35. Once again, uh, it is the Clint Lions 28, Fabian 7, and it's the final. All right, Angel Torres, a final from Fabian's Wildcat Stadium, 28-7. to Clint over Fabian's. Clint getting the much-needed district victory. Let's head out to Bill Kuhn, get an update from Highlander Stadium as Bel Air hosting Horizon, and it's been all Highlanders in this game. Bill, what do you got for us? With one minute and ten seconds left in the game, it is Bel Air 54, Horizon 0. To make the night even longer for Horizon, Robert Rodriguez goes out injured. Uh, has not come back to the game. Coaches up here said he won't be coming back. Uh, that puts in backup quarterback Mario Martinez. Fumbles the ball. 11-yard carry by J.J. Lopez for the first touchdown on defense for Bel Air. Next series of down one play throws an interception to Cruz Davis for a 25 yard touchdown uh, pass uh, interception uh, for Bel Air. So with one minute, six seconds left in the game is Bel Air 54 Horizon 0. 
All right, Bill Coon, thank you very much. We got a live update from our nine one five to or from our uh, from Isleta Stadium. Let's go out to Hutchins Stadium. Join Joe Rodriguez, Isleta, and Delvai. We got a live update. Joe, what do you got for us? Thank you very much, Paul. Eight forty nine left in the ball game, man. It is Isleta or Delvai leading the by the score of twenty to sixteen. The Delvai Conquistadores went for it on fourth and fifth. Completed a pass. Jake Feedy so completed a pass to Andreas Mabe who caught the ball about the 10-yard completion and was stripped by Alonso Rodriguez, making it a spread a ball at their own 30-yard line. Rodriguez is the same player that picked up the block, extra point attempt, and took it to the house for two points. Where we're at right now with 8-18 to go in the ballgame, it is a third and five uh, for Isleta at the Del Valle 40 yard line. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you with 8 10 to go in the ballgame. It is Del Valle leading Isleta by the score of 20 to 16. All right, Joe Rodriguez, thank you very much, boy. An exciting game there at Hutchins Stadium. Isleta hosting Del Valle, just a four point, a slim four point lead for the Del Valle Conquistadors. Hey, let's go get an update from Ryan Vidales over at San Elizario High School, San Eli, hosting Irvin. Let's get this late update. Ryan. With 128 left in the fourth quarter, this has been a crazy one. It is the San Elizario Eagles now taking the lead 25-20 to over the Urban Rockets. Uh, that last touchdown score came off of a Freddie Garcia interception from Dallas Medina. You turned that ball all the way down to the 18-yard line, and the Eagles just ran and ran and ran the ball down. It was capped off by an Andrew Cedillo two-yard quarterback sneak that punched that score in. However, the two-point conversion was no good. But that let the San Elizario Eagles go up by a score of 25 to 20. The defense then had a great uh, defensive stand to force uh, the Urban Rockets to punt. However, right now the Eagles have the ball with 126 left in the game and they're driving. Urban Rockets have two timeouts remaining, but they just need one first down to seal this victory and get that last playoff pick spot. Once again, with 122 left in the fourth quarter, that is the San Elizario Eagles 25 and the Rockets 20. All right, Ryan Vidalis, the wow, what are their 25 unanswered points for the San Eli Eagles? We thought the Irvin Rockets were going to run away with that one, up 20 to nothing in the first. Now San Eli leading it 25-20 in the fourth quarter. Hey, we got a live update from Eastwood Trooper Stadium. Let's go to Steve Escajeda for this update. Steve. We've got five seconds here to go in the third quarter. Eastwood has now stretched their lead out over Franklin to 38-28. to uh, quarterback Evan Mijares, a 22-yard touchdown pass to Alex Sanchez, again to give him that 10-point lead. That's Mijares' fourth touchdown of the ball game to four different receivers. And again, we talk about what happened. Franklin going in for a touchdown, a would-be touchdown, fumbling it out of the end zone. They lose seven points on the ensuing position. Eastwood goes down the field, and again, Mijares throwing that touchdown pass to uh, get that out to a 10-point lead. Mijares in the ball game, 12 out of 26, 290 yards, and four big touchdown passes. Uh, Franklin has just gotten back and fucked fumble the ball, and he put it recovered on the Franklin 34-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. At the end of three, <coughs> excuse me, Eastwood out in front of Franklin, 38 to 28. All right, Steve Escajeda, thank you very much. Wow, what a game there between the Franklin Cougars and Eastwood Troopers. Eastwood now increasing their lead to 10, 38-28 in the third quarter. We've got exciting games all over. We're going to have final wrap-ups, too. You're listening to Football Friday Night. We're going to take a break, come back with much more. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. That's Rockwell, and that is Michael Jackson in that song. Someone's watching me. I feel like someone's watching me. That Rockwell's best friend was Michael Jackson, and that was Michael Jackson in that song. That sounded See like that. a ripoff from that uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters thing that Ray Parker Jr. Hey, I think he's got a lawsuit in there. We've got some final scores from all over the borderland. We have some district championship games up in the land of enchantment. It's a final centennial tops Las Cruces. 30 to 23 Centennial wins the district title. Also Deming tops Gadsden by a slim margin of 12 to 10. Deming wins the district title over Gadsden. Also a final Artesia defeated Mayfield 43 to 7. Reagan County defeated Anthony 46-41. Alpine defeated Tornillo 43 0. Fort Stockton defeated Pecos 28 7. Monahans over Mountain View 69 13. It's a final. Clint over Fabens 28 7. And Chapin defeated El Paso High 66 7. Let's go to our 915 Tours Game of the Week and join Adrian Broadus for an update on Austin and Bowie. Adrian. Guys, we've got a great game brewing out here. Six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Bowie was able to force a punt on Austin's next drive. Austin still leads 14-9 to in this game, but the Bowie Bears are on the move. Abraham Carrasco has passes to guess who else? It's Kevin Hernandez, his top receiver tonight. A pass, uh, actually they just converted a third down here, a 12-yard pass there. Uh, Right now, on on the game, Kevin Hernandez has four catches for 55 uh, receiving yards, and Bowie all the way down to the Austin Panther 30-yard line with 535 left here in this game. Bowie trying to get on the board and take the lead for the first time tonight down in this one. Austin leads 14-9 to here in the 915 Tours Game of the Week. All right, Adrian brought us. Thank you very much. 14-9, to Austin leading Bowie. Exciting game down at the reservation. Let's get an update from Joe Rodriguez as Letta hosting Del Valle. Joe. 421 left in the ball game, and Del Valle has extended their lead over the Isleta Indians by the score of 27 to 16. The Isleta Indians, when I was reported, was third and five at their own 40 yard line. They ran the ball within four, uh, two inches of the first down, and C- Coach Joe Martinez, instead of running the ball to try and uh, get a first down when it was only fourth and inches, threw a fade that was nowhere near close to being completed. From there, the Del Valle Conquistadores took the ball at their own 35-yard line, and with eight plays, 65 yards, Juan Archuleta, a six-yard run, a touchdown run, his fourth touchdown of the season, the extra point was good on that to bring this, so that brings us to where we're at right now with Del Valle about to kick off to the Isleta Indians. It is a two-score ball game with the Del Valle Conquistadores leading the Isleta Indians by the score of 27-16. to 16. All right, Joe Rodriguez, thank you so much. Davai pulling away late in that one. Exciting game between the Hanks Knights and Park the Matadors. Let's go out to Brandon Cohn, the Iceman, for an update on this one. Brandon. 7.32 left in the contest, and the Matadors, Parkland, a 38-34 lead over Hanks at the 9.09 mark of this last quarter. Hanks quarterback Porras, a 10-yard touchdown to his wideout, Jude Blanco. Blanco, a monster game, eight catches, 165 yards, three touchdowns in this game thus far. The PAT was good, making the score at Hanks 34-31 over Parkland. Parkland says, anything you can do, I can do better. They come back at the 7.40 mark here of the fourth. Quarterback Ortiz scores on a 13-yard keeper. PAT was good, making the score Parkland 38-34. Parkland's quarterback, a Ortiz career game, five total touchdowns, two passing, three rush, and their running back, Caleb Martinez. He's been a stud on the ground, 14 carries, 174 yards, 728 remaining in this contest. Whoever has the ball last could certainly win it as we have Parkland up 38-34 over Hanks. All right, Brandon Cohn, thank you so much. What a barn burner there between Parkland and Hanks. Now let's head out to Jeremy Caranco, another exciting game between Burgess and Andrus. Jeremy, what do you got for us? We have 9.29 left to go in the final frame of the fourth quarter, and it is now Andrus who has taken the lead over Burgess, 21-16, to and it was the second connection of the night for Jaden Urbina, a 24-yard pass to Eric Vulture. The extra point was good, setting up that drive for Andrus. We talked the last time we spoke, Burgess was driving inside the Andrus 20, and it was a Daniel Guillen missed 29-yard field goal. 
Jordan Owens goes 32 yards on a rush on the next play, and that's how Andrus was able to find the end zone with that touchdown connection I mentioned earlier. And now Burgess, as Rios just hit Ibrahim Tiha for a 34-yard connection, and now the Mustangs are inside the red zone at the Andrus 20. So we have a great game going on here at Mustang Country at Beatty Samane Stadium. Sorry, Burgess Mustang Stadium, 8.59 left to go in the fourth quarter. It's Andrus 21 and Burgess 16. All right, Jeremy Caronco, with that update from Mustang Stadium, what a, a lead by the Andrus Eagles to come back and take the lead there. Hey, exciting game between Irvin and San Elizario. Let's head out to Ryan Vidalis for this update. Ryan. It is a final here at Eagles Stadium. The San Elizario Eagles come from behind to win this one by a score of 25-20 to 20 over the Irvin Rockets. Now, this is a true story of two halves. In the first half, San Elizario did struggle to get things going offensively. They had two block punts early in the game that gifted Irvin two easy scores, followed by some defensive lapses that let Irvin take that early 20-0 to zero lead. However, uh, second half, San Elizario makes some adjust- adjustments, and they come out on fire during the second half. They score 25 unanswered points. Second half, they get three interceptions off of quarterback Dallas Medina. San Elizario will now get that four seed in the District 1-4A Division I district, so they are making the playoffs. San Elizario's a key player in this game. He was the workhorse, and he pretty much carried them in the second half. It was a Zamar Vargas. Uh, he finished the game with 29 carries, 223 yards, and Three total touchdowns. The final touchdown came by quarterback Andrew Cedillo off a of quarterback sneak. Um, but other than that, I would say that the true players of this game was the San Elizario defense. That second half, they allowed zero points and had three turnovers. They they took the ball th- uh, they took the ball away three times off of three interceptions that really sealed the deal for the San Elizario Eagles and got them this victory to get them into the playoffs. Once again, out at Eagle Stadium. The final is the San Elizario Eagles 25 and the Irvin Rockets 20. All right. All right, Ryan Vidalis, thank you so much for that Boston's Pizza postgame report. Great job, Ryan. What a win for Sinelli coming back from 20 points down to win it 25-20. Huge win. Uh, congrats to head coach Robert Herrera and that entire group. Again, uh, the, the folks who don't like everybody getting a trophy, this is one of the times that really – Feels good. Uh, a great battle between both teams and, and just a stick to itiveness. A team that, uh, you know, has been dumped on all year long and they just wouldn't quit tonight. Very much so. And you know who won't quit? The Chapin Huskies. They just kept going and going and going. With this Boston's Pizza post game report, let's go out to Zay Galindo for this final wrap up. Zay. Thank you, guys. Final here from Urban Memorial Stadium. It's Chapin 66, El Paso High 7. And it was a big game for Chapin quarterback Evan Rivera, who got to start over Davion Singleton tonight. He went 19-24, 236 yards, four touchdowns, and only one interception. He did spread the love. He got the aforementioned Singleton involved. He finished with five receptions, 68 yards, and a touchdown. He also got one. He got seven other receivers involved, seven seven other receivers involved podcasts tonight and um on the ground the huskies amassed over 250 yards finishing with 279 total yards on only 21 attempts their leading rusher was brandon ortega who finishes this game with nine attempts 176 yards and a touchdown meanwhile amari welch their third string ward uh running back finishes with 79 yards on seven attempts and a touchdown meanwhile for the tigers they did they were Shut out until late in the third quarter when Chris Valenzuela ripped off a 61-yard rush, and that set up his 12-yard rushing touchdown. However, aside from that, they weren't able to get much going. Their quarterback, Martin Gonzalez, he finishes this game with five completions on 15 attempts, 83 yards, and two interceptions, and the Tigers finish this one with only 190 yards of total offense. So now El Paso High, they fall – two only three in district play and it's been a tough go for them they fell to burgess they fell to andrus and now they fall to chapin we'll see um how everything shapes up however for the huskies they do improve to six and three on the year and their only district loss being to Conatillo. 
that'll be it from Urban Memorial Stadium where the Huskies win over the El Paso I Tigers 66-7. Thanks, guys. All right, Zay Galindo with that postgame report. Thank you very much. Great job out there. We also have Joe Rodriguez with an update from Isleta High School. Let's go out to Joe and get an update. Isleta hosting Delvai. Joe, what do you got for us? Thank you very much, Bo. 2.30 left in the ball game, and it is Delvai leading Isleta by the score of 27 to 16. However, Isleta just converted, went 36 yards, uh, went 34 yards on a fourth and 12 in their own territory to get a first down. And the quarterback that completed this pass was sophomore backup Michael Hawkins, who came in on this fourth down after he sort of took a timeout to discuss things. Hawkins comes in, completes the ball, and right now uh, Hawkins ran another play, and they're at the 26-yard line of Del Valle, or excuse me, 24-yard line of Del Valle, with first and 10 coming up. And... Uh, Hawkins' pass was intercepted by Josiah Nunez, and he ran it back for 81 yards on the touchdown, and it looks like that's going to be negated on the play due to a flag. Uh, and we have, we're have we going to have a first and 10 coming up at the Del Valle 24-yard line for the Isleta Indians with 2.30 to go on the clock. And right now they are walking off the, the flag that happened on – the, that happened on the on the interception, and they called a personal foul face mask. So now it is going to be uh, Del Valle, or excuse me, Isleta ball at the Del Valle for the 13 yard line, first and 10 coming up. A little bit of hot action here. Hawkins takes the ball, hands it off to the tailback for the Isleta Indians, Martin Castro, who picks up. Uh, who picks up five yards on the play. It's going to be second and five coming up for the Isleta Indians. Hey Joe, okay, Joe Rodriguez, thank you very much. Once again, still 11-point lead for the Divai uh, Conquistadors over the Isleta Indians. Hey, we had a final from El Dorado. Montwood tops El Dorado 41-21. Let's go to J.D. Sursley at the sack. J.D. Yeah, Montwood 41, El Dorado 21. Michael Southern, number one quarterback for... Uh, the Montwood Rams definitely a key player of their game. He was averaging he over he has over 2,000 yards passing already in the season, and he was just adding to that total today uh, with four total touchdowns, 240 yards passing through the air. Uh, Diego Owoka, uh definitely the do it all man uh, catching and running. Uh, he had one running touchdown, one uh, catching touchdown at, uh, for 16 yards. Uh, set up the, to go ahead and never like let let down the lead. Um, El Dorado, you know Ryan Estrada, definitely their their go to guy and then their top dog. But you know coming from back from injuries and stuff, it was still kind of slow. Even though he had 140 yards, uh, uh, 182 yards running with two touchdowns uh, at the end. Obviously they had to go into a passing formation because they were behind. And uh, Elijah Issa just had a lot of pressure and would uh, try to run more than try to throw it in the air to try to get more down uh, down yards. Um, El Dorado definitely uh, was, oh, man, they played a good game, but, you know, big dog Montwood Rams took over in the second half, which it looked like it was going to be a shootout. So in this, uh, overall, they fall to 1-8 and eight El Dorado, and overall Montwood becomes 5-4. Uh, and four. And then five and two in district. So Montwood Rams forty one, El Dorado twenty one. All right, JD Sursley, thank you so much for that post game report. Hey, we got a fun game between Parkland and Hanks. Let's go out to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update. Brandon. Yes, we do. One thirty nine left. Hanks trying to take the lead. Parkland up thirty eight thirty four. Get this, it's a fourth and goal at the one yard line. Hanks has called a timeout. Their star running back tonight, Michael Oliver. 28 carries, 151 yards, one touchdown. He's trying to get in. They have denied him twice already within the five-yard line. That defensive line of Parkland has been stellar. Also, there was an attempt by Marcus Porras on the keeper, and he was denied. So now fourth and goal. This could potentially 
be the game. Nobody has been able to stop anyone tonight. I mean, it's been insane all night long. So here we go as Hanks comes to the one-yard line of Parkland. It's fourth and goal. Porras, of course, the quarterback, has his running back, Oliver, to his right. Oliver now in motion. Porras takes it and throws it, and it's a touchdown drop. Dropped. It was wide open. Oliver had it, and he dropped it in the end zone. And how do you like that as Parkland holds tanks because of the drop in the end zone? He had it, dropped it, as we have 135 to go. The crowd is ecstatic here at Parkland Matador Stadium as the Matadors hold the narrow 38-34 lead over Hanks. What a stop. What a play by the uh, the Hanks Knights. A drop there, and Parkland looks like they're going to go on to, to win this one by four. Yeah, they sent Oliver in motion and just a, a little flat route. The only thing I would say is uh, I don't know uh, what Hanks has in the capacity of timeouts. If they got three, Parkland's only got the ball at their one-yard line. They don't get a first down. Three timeouts. You're getting the ball back with about a minute and a half with a high school punter probably around Parkland's 40-yard line, and, and Hanks could move the ball. Jude Blanco, uh, Jude Blanco still on that team with a, a, almost a couple of hundred yards and three touchdowns tonight. And we can go back out to Brandon Cohn in just a moment. Let's head back out to Adrian Broadus and our 915 Tours Game of the Week. The Austin Panthers hosting the Bowie Bears. Let's get an update from Adrian. Adrian, take it away. Guys, it is a final out here at Ari McKee Stadium. The Austin Panthers defeat the Bowie Bears 14-9. to Bowie drove it all the way to the Panthers' 20-yard line, but quarterback Abraham Carrasco was picked off for the second time. Credit wide receiver and defensive back for Austin, the sophomore Andrew Andujo, with the interception in the back of the end zone. And credit the Austin Panthers for getting a gutsy victory tonight. Austin now improves to four and five on the season, two and one in district play. Meanwhile, Bowie falls to seven and two on the year, two and one in their district play. Uh, quarterback Anakin Torres for the winning Austin Panthers was four of ten tonight for 165 passing yards and a touchdown pass to his wideout Andrew Andujo. Who, who is the star of the night, four catches, 145 receiving yards, and that touchdown from 70 yards out set them over the top. On the ground, they were led by Ruben Bustillos, who had 14 carries for 59 rushing yards. And then on the flip side with Bowie, Abraham Carrasco, their quarterback, 9 of 19, 111 uh, passing yards, but two interceptions tonight. And then their top receiver in this one, Kevin Hernandez, four catches, 55 uh, receiving yards in this one. On the ground, they were paced nicely by running back Alan Monta, who had 20 carries for 80 yards. And next week, Bowie will take on Riverside to determine some seeding in Class 4A. Meanwhile, Austin will visit Irvin and pretty much locked in their second second place overall finish in 1-4A. That's the final out here at R.E. McKee Stadium. The Austin Panthers get a big victory at home, 14-9 to over the Bowie Bears. Big win for the Austin Panthers. Adrian, thank you very much for that Boston's Pizza postgame report. Great job out there. Once again, in our 915 Tours Game of the Week, Austin defeats Bowie 14-9. to Let's go out to, uh, we got a live update from Jeremy Caranco over at Burgess Mustang Stadium. Jeremy, what do you got for us? 417 left to go in the fourth quarter. It's Andrew still holding on to a 21 to 16 lead over Burgess. The last time we spoke, Burgess was driving at the Andrews 20 and they attempt to go for it on a fourth and two and it is stopped at Caleb Hanna, who's had a great night, gets stopped there. Andrews gets the ball back. They go for it on fourth down. They don't get it. And then Burgess on the ensuing drive is at the Andrews 23 and they gamble on a fourth and one with a QB sneak. Alex Reels is stuffed. And Andrus has great field position and has a chance to put this game away. Again, 347 left to go in the fourth quarter. It's Andrus leading Burgess 21 to 16, and the Eagles have a third down and 11 at the Burgess 26. All right, Jeremy Caranco from Mustang Stadium, thank you so much. Let's head out to Joe Rodriguez, get an update on Del Valle and his letter. Joe. Thank you very much for 108 left in the ball game, man. It is Del Valle leading the Sledder by the score of 27 to 16. The Sledder Indians went for it on fourth and five at the Del Valle 10 yard line, and it was not meant to be. Michael Hawkins, the sophomore backup quarterback for the Sledder Indians, 
scrambled, uh, couldn't find any receivers, tried to keep the ball, and uh, ran out of bounds for no gain. And uh, it looks like uh, the Delvalle Conquistadores will pick up their eighth victory of this 2023 uh, football season and will remain undefeated in district play as the clock is winding down and this game will be over with the Delvalle Conquistadores leading the Isla, or defeating the Isleta Indians, excuse me, by the score of 27 to 16. All right. All right, Joe Rodriguez, we'll come back to you for a post-game report. Great job out there. 27 to 16. Devai defeats Isleta. Hey, let's head out to Eastwood's Trooper Stadium, get a live update from Eastwood hosting Franklin and Steve Escajeda. Steve, what do you got for us? We've got 338 to go in the ball game, and uh, Franklin has cut Eastwood's lead down to 38 to 31. Uh, Juan Pablo Soto comes in, nails a 29-yard field goal. After Franklin drove the ball fairly deep in Eastwood uh, territory, uh, they thought about it on a uh, fourth and nine, thought about it for a while. They decided to go for the tie, and Soto nailed it from 29 yards out. 3.29 to go in the ball game. Right now, Eastwood, as they do, they've already down to the Franklin 26-yard uh, line, looking at a first and 10 from there. 3.23, 3.22 to go in the ball game. Eastwood holding on to a narrow 38-31 lead over Franklin. All right, Steve Escajeda from Trooper Stadium. Steve, thank you so much. Let's head back out to Brandon Cohn. Parkland taking on Hanks. Let's get an update on the Matadors and the Knights. Brandon. Well, it is a final. As How about this? Parkland pulls it off 38-34 over Hanks. Of course, the big stop, fourth and goal, and then Parkland gets the ball in the shadow of their own end zone, and they're able to get that last first down. Parkland had to burn, or pardon me, Hanks had to burn their last time out, and that was that, as they say, and Parkland stellar in the clutch, able to get that first down, victory formation. How about this, the Matadors with the 38-34 win, 5-5 five and five on the year, 2-3 and three in 1-5A. I'll give you some stats here for them. Marcus Porras, uh, their quarterback, of 25, 262 yards, four total touchdowns. He also had eight carries for 47 yards, a touchdown on the ground. Michael Oliver, excuse me, I'm giving you the hang steps. Let me go back to this. For um, Parkland, rather, their quarterback, let's talk about Eric Ortiz. Ortiz, a great game this evening. Let me go ahead and pull this up. 12 of 20, 155 yards, five total touchdowns. He also had 17 carries for 54 yards, three rushing touchdowns. Caleb Martinez, is their star running back, 14 carries, 174 yards. Fabian Cervantes, he had a touchdown reception. Also, Jesus Molina, a touchdown reception. On the other side, for the Hanks Knights, of course, a big loss for Hanks. They are now 5-4, and 1-3 and three in 1-5A. Their quarterback, Marcus Porras, 16 of 25, 262 yards, four total touchdowns. He also had nine carries for 51 yards, a touchdown on the ground. Michael Oliver, what a game there. Running back, 28 carries, 151 yards, and a touchdown. And also Jude Blanco, eight receptions, 165 yards, and three touchdowns. It's a final in this epic game here in Northeast El Paso as Parkland gets the tremendous victory, 38-34 to over Hanks. All right, Brandon Cohn, thank you so much for that post-game report. What a win for Parkland Matadors over the Hanks Knights. Hey, we got a live update from Burgess Mustang Stadium. Let's head out to Jeremy Caraca for this update. Burgess hosting Andrews. Jeremy. 225 left to go in the fourth quarter, and it's Andrews still leading Burgess 21-16. to Last time we spoke, Burgess had a fourth down stop, and they got the ball back inside the Burgess 25-yard line. They do not. They cannot move the ball. A big penalty puts them back. They're forced to punt. And Caleb Hanna goes 70 yards to the Andrus 19-yard line, and that's where they're looking at a third down and nine right now at the Andrus 19. They'll take a timeout, so a huge play coming up for Burgess. Again, they trail by five, and they are inside the red zone. 2-12 left to go fourth quarter with a timeout by Burgess. Andrus leads it 21-16. to all right, Jeremy Caranco, thank you so much. It's still a slim lead for the Andrus Eagles over the Burgess Mustangs. It was all Bel Air tonight over Horizon. Let's go out to this final wrap-up from Bill Kuhn for Bel Air hosting Horizon. Bill. 
Guys, it was uh, it was all Bel Air tonight, fifty four to nothing over Horizon. Uh, let me start with some Horizon numbers, which are very meek. One hundred six total yards of offense is all they had, and and their starting quarterback uh, Robert Rodriguez goes out at the end of the third, uh, beginning of the fourth, uh, with a shoulder injury, is what the coach told me about it. Uh, they think he's going to be okay uh, as. Uh, Horizon will finish up the season against Parkland next week. Noah Martinez, wow, two touchdowns on the night. Him running those two touchdowns and passing for 313 yards on the night. Uh, huge night for Noah. Huge night. I mean, the defense uh, for Bel Air, two touchdowns on the defense back-to-back plays, 115 yards. So it's all over with at Highlander Stadium. It is Bel Air 54, uh, Horizon 0, Bel Air and Devi match up tomorrow, next week, next Friday night. All right. Bill Kuhn, thank you so much. Once again, Bel Air victorious over Horizon. 54 nothing, setting up a huge game next week, Bel Air and Devi. That should be a fun one. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda. We have an update from Trooper Stadium, Eastwood, hosting Franklin. Steve, take it away. Thanks a lot, guys. 142 left to go in the ball game. Eastwood was looking at a fourth and nine from the Franklin 26-yard line. They decided to go for it to try to put this ball game away. Evan Minvarez's pass was knocked down. I was on no good, so Franklin has taken over at their own 26-yard line. Uh, 136 to go on first down. The uh, pass by Shea Smith was incomplete. Uh, Eastwood is looking for an intentional grounding. Right now, the uh, referees are in a huddle trying to decide uh, if it was or if it wasn't. And uh, Shea Smith is uh, nearby <laughs> trying to convince them otherwise. Uh, they are, they are going to call intentional grounding against uh, Franklin. That will put them back and a loss of down. Okay, Again, Steve. So great. Stay on the line, Steve. We're going to come right back to you. We've got a live update from Mustang Stadium. Jeremy Caraca, what do you have for us from Burgess hosting Andrus? Jeremy. 205 left to go in the fourth quarter. And Jaden Bowser scores on a 13 yard reverse run to give the Mustangs the lead on a third down and eight. And the score is 20. Two to 21, Burgess, uh, two-point conversion attempt here. Real looking for David Mata, and he makes the catch. And we have a three-point advantage now for the Burgess Mustangs with 136 left to go in the fourth quarter. What a fantastic game we have here. Uh, Jaden Bowser, who didn't get a single carry the entire night, stuns the Andrus defense on a reverse play, a beautiful play call there by the Burgess Mustangs and Bernardo Luna. Wow, what a call there. So it's 136 left to go. It's Burgess now leading address 24 to 21. All right, Jeremy, great job. Stay on the line. We're going to come back to you in just a moment. Let's head back out to Trooper Stadium and join Steve Escajeda for an update on Eastwood hosting Franklin. Franklin with the ball down by seven. Steve. Well, Frank, again, 130 to go in the ball game. Franklin down 38 to 31. A couple of costly penalties have put Franklin back down to their own six-yard line. They're looking at a third and 20. Uh, they got to get past the 26-yard line. Again, Shea Smith, a couple of very costly penalties, an intentional grounding, and then an illegal procedure. Here we go. In the shotgun, Smith with the ball in his own end zone. Going, going long down the field, and that ball's going to be intercepted at the 50-yard line. Intercepted by uh, Jordan Morales of Eastwood, and that should be the ball game. Franklin went for all of it, but uh, you could tell uh, Morales had a beat on it from the get-go. The intercepted and Eastwood will take over on their own 45-yard line with 121 to go in the ball game, leading Franklin 38-31. to Again, Eastwood, Franklin, only one timeout left. Uh, they can take a couple of knees and pretty much put this ball game away. Again, 121 to go in this one. Eastwood, 38, Franklin, 31. 
All right, Steve, thank you so much. Wow, just one time out for, for Franklin after that turnover. So, once again, th- this is going to be a final. Eastwood 38-31. How many close games have the Eastwood Troopers won, but they keep getting it done and now improving to 8-1 and overall, 7-0 and in district, earning the district title. And it's always the double-sided coin. You spend the entire night saying... What are these guys still doing there? This is Eastwood, and this is Franklin with all those injuries. This game should not be close. And then in the very end, somebody's going to make a play. Who was it this time? And and it seems like it's always uh, somebody different. Uh, This time it's the D-back with the pick that uh, puts things away. And, oh, by the way, they had about a four-minute drive there. Took a little, a lot of time off the clock, and really put Franklin under the gun where they, where they had to throw uh, something risky. Shea Smith did. We'll head back out to that post game report from Steve Escajeda in just a little bit. Let's head back out to Burgess Mustang Stadium. A slim three point lead. Burgess leads Andrus by three. A minute left in the game. Let's head back out to Jeremy Caranco at Mustang Stadium for an update. Jeremy, take it away. We have time added back on the clock, so 151 left to go in the fourth quarter. Again, Burgess has just taken a 24-21 to lead on the Andrus Eagles. What all seen moments ago, Andrus had 10 yards to just put this game away. Burgess gets their tremendous run by Hannah, 70 yards to set up that score we just spoke to you about. Jaden Bowser on a 13-yard reverse scores, and it's a two-point conversion. Good Mata from Rios. And the Andrus Eagles have just got the kickoff, and they are at the 22-yard line. And uh, under center is Jaden Gordon. He throws a pass left side. It's complete for Owens. Owens has a big hole. He's across midfield and into Burgess territory at the 44-yard line. 141 left to go in the fourth quarter again. Burgess leading 24-21. The Eagles have just converted a big pass play, about 37 yards on that Gordon pass, too. Owens, and a quick no huddle here. Again, Andrus is at the 42 of Burgess, two, three receivers left, one to the right side. Gordon has the snap, looks back, and still dodging receivers, trying to find somebody. Take, takes off. He's going. He's got a first down. He's at the 30. He's at the 25. He's down there. It's first down, Andrus at the Burgess 25-yard line, 119 left to go, fourth quarter. Again, Burgess leads 24-21. And we have a timeout. Andrus will take one. Wow. 119 left to go fourth quarter. Andrus is at the Burgess 27-yard line looking at a first down and 10, trailing by three. All right, Jeremy, uh, stay on the line. We're going to come right back to you in just a moment. We have some final scores we're going to tell you about. Austin defeated Bowie 14-9. to Devai all over his led a 27-16. Parkland squeaks by Hanks 38-34. And Eastwood is going to squeak by Franklin, likely 38-31, time winding down there. Montwood defeated El Dorado 41-21. And Chapin all over El Paso High 66-7. Seven, uh, Canateo over Jefferson, fifty-one nothing. San Eli came back to defeat Irvin, twenty-five twenty. Clint over Fabens, twenty-eight to seven. And Bel Air over Horizon, fifty-four nothing. Also down in Austin, Cathedral fell to Savio, forty-eight. 48- 28. We'll go back to uh, Jeremy Caranco at Burgess Mustang Stadium as he takes us down. Andrus with the ball, threatening for the lead. Jeremy, take it away to go in the 119 left to go in the fourth quarter burgess leads andrus 24 21 but the eagles are at the 27 of burgess just fresh out of a timeout let's see what the eagles have drawn up two receivers right three to the left side jordan urbina with the snap and shotgun formation he's at the 30 he's taking off again stumbles breaks a tackle down and inside the 25 now down to the 24 second down and six for the eagles 105 and counting fourth quarter no timeouts for the Eagles, right as of now, they have two remaining. 59 seconds left to go. Again, second down and six. 55 seconds. They trail by three. Back in formation they go. Again, it's just a shotgun. One single right. It's uh, it's Marcus Wilson to the right. Two, Three receivers right. One to the left. Snap. Back is Urbina. Urbina to the end zone. It's tipped an incomplete third down, looking to connect with Michael Taylor there in the back of the end zone, right underneath the goalpost. It's no, it's incomplete third down. Thirty-four seconds left to go. 
No timeouts taken. We have a stoppage of play with the incomplete pass. Again, the ball is at the 24-yard line of Burgess and is now third down and six for the Eagles. Trailing by three, 34 seconds. The Eagles are still discussing with their coaches here what they want to do. Chris Taylor speaking with Urbina. He's back in the formation under center. Three to the left, one to the right. Urbina throws it left. It's caught by Michael Taylor, and he's got a first down at the 15 of Burgess. 28 seconds left to go. It's first down and 10 for the Andrews Eagles, trailing by three. All right, first down and 10 at the 15. No timeouts taken again here, Andrews. All righty. Team is back under center. And it's Urbina again. He's been in the shotgun formation this whole drive. Three to the right, two left. All receivers are wide. It's a snap to Urbina. He has so much time here. Throws it across the middle. It's incomplete. The Taylor's in. And a penalty flag comes out. It looks like the Mustangs will be flagged for pass interference here. Again, it was a little short pass back to the line of scrimmage, and it looks like a Burgess defender got there too early. We'll see what the refs decide to do here. They're discussing in a huddle now. Again, so this game is coming down to this drive here. The Eagles trail by three, 24-21, 21 seconds left to go. It was, that was a first down pass there at the Burgess 15. Okay, Jeremy, uh, Paul, bring you in here. Andrus here threatening. Looks like a pass interference uh, call on Burgess. Uh, this could be huge here. Andrus coming in 2-1 and one in district, Burgess 1-2. and two. Yeah, the good news, if it's, uh, as Jeremy said, short pass, it'll be a spot foul, and then they'll get it from there. And uh, for Andrus down three points, your field goal kicker, what a surprise on his team, a sophomore. Emilio Bursiaga has not knocked one through yet this year. I think he's three out of five on extra okay. point attempts. Okay, Jeremy, take it away. Let's go back to you. Again, a personal foul of Matthew Zabata, so they'll give him a first down again. I guess spot foul, as Paul mentioned. Urbina has a throw. Right side, incomplete. Again, on that play, it was shotgun snap. Right side, Urbina ran to the right side and tried to throw it cross field, and it's incomplete. So now second down and 10 at the 15. 12 seconds left to go for the Eagles. Andres, Jason, again, Jordan Urbina has been – sharing snaps all season long with Vincent Gonzalez, but Jaden Arbina has has been the quarterback all night for the Eagles. Marcus Wilson has had a rough second half with two fumbles, and he's still in there to his right of Arbina. Two receivers right, two to the left, wide set. And a timeout is taken by Burgess. 12 seconds left to go, trailing by three, Andres. Trailing Burgess 24-21 with a timeout by Burgess. Okay, here you go. This is when it really comes down to 12 seconds. They're going to milk every little second of this game here. Andrus with the ball. Uh, boy, this is a drop back. If you pass me, you can get to maybe three plays out of this if you can. And is this the Montwood Pebble Hills game all over again? Remember, Montwood uh, down 16-14 with about a minute and a half left. Had a chance to kick about a 26-yard field goal. Would give them a 17-16 lead if he propositioned that missed a 25-yarder from the same uh, the same distance uh, earlier at the end of the first half, in fact. Does Andrus do the same? It sounds like Andrus is looking to go for the TD here. They want to get in and win this thing, but if they have no other options, do they try what, whatever it is, about a 30-yard kick with uh, almost no time on the clock to try and tie and get to OT? Okay, let's head back out to Mustang Stadium and join Jeremy Caranco for an update. Jeremy. 12 seconds left to go here. Burgess leads Andrus 24 to 21, but the Eagles have a second down at 10 at the Burgess 15 yard line, and both teams are back down under center. It's Urbina ball low and in himself in the backfield. Three right, two left. Here's the snap. Urbina looks across the middle. It is caught for the touchdown, receiving it. Christopher Hager. With the go-ahead 15-yard touchdown pass to give the Eagles the lead. Six seconds left to go in this game. What a catch there. It was a right across the middle, a slant in the back of the end zone. Caught there, and the Eagles have just taken the lead, 27-24. to We'll see what they decide to do here. I assume nothing else in this extra point. And we will have the attempt right away. 
Okay, meanwhile, Jeremy, while you're there, we're waiting for the extra point. Eastwood defeated Franklin. It's a final. 38-31 per reporter on the site, Steve Escajeda. Eastwood has won the 6A district title. Congratulations to the Eastwood Troopers. Let's head back out to Jeremy Caranco, get an update on this extra point attempt pending for the Andrus Eagles. Andrus over Burgess. Jeremy, take it away. The extra point is good, and Andrus has just what essentially is a walk-off touchdown. They lead 28-24 with six seconds left to go. And again, on that play, it was a 15-yard touchdown pass. Jadon Urbina to Christopher Hager, a senior wideout and cornerback, making the play on the catch in the back of the end zone on the slant route pass. And the seniors of Burgess are just absolutely deflated, and so is this crowd. Again, so six, six seconds left to go. Andres has just taken a 28-24 lead on Burgess. Just been a battle all night long between these two teams. Andres and Burgess, and back and forth ever since the second quarter. Uh, what a game this is, and it looks like this is going to be a final. Andres is leading Burgess 28-24, just six seconds to go. Let's go back out to Jeremy as this one winds down, and we'll do our Ignitify local scoreboard in just a moment. As this one's winding down, Jeremy Caranco with Andres leading 28-24, six seconds to go at Mustang Stadium. Yes, we're still awaiting kickoff here. As though we have a longer longer break here between this score. Again, uh, Burgess just drove 74 yards on that drive to take the – I mean, sorry, Andrus did 20, 74 yards on that drive to take the lead over Burgess, 28-24. Uh, Burgess scored with two minutes left in this game themselves to take a lead and got a two-point conversion to go up three. And the Andrus Eagles put together their longest drive of the night with, to – well, it looks like they will win this. We have a kickoff, though. Again, six seconds left to go. We're still waiting the kickoff, guys. All right. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, what a game here. Let's go through our Ignitify local scoreboard in our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Austin defeated Bowie 14-9. to Also, San Elizario came back to defeat Irvin. They were down 20 to nothing. San Eli was. San Eli scored 25 unanswered points to win it 25-20. Meanwhile, Riverside off tonight, so it will be Bowie in Riverside for a share of the district title next week at Bowie's Beatty Samang Stadium. Meanwhile, Delvai defeated Isleta 27-16, Parkland over Hanks 38-34, and Bel Air defeated Horizon 54-0. Bel Air will take on Delvai for the district title next week. That should be a fun one. Hey, over in 6A, Eastwood defeated Franklin 38-31. Eastwood wins the district title 7 and 0 in uh, district 38 31 once again over the franklin cougars meanwhile montwood has clinched a playoff spot defeating el dorado tonight 41 21 elsewhere in 5a chapin defeated el paso high 66 to 7 burgess is currently trailing andrus right now a couple seconds left 28 24 and canateo defeated jefferson 51 nothing uh, elsewhere Cathedral falls to Savio in Austin, 48-28. Monahans defeated Mountain View, 69-13. Fort Stockton defeated Pecos, 28-7. Up in the land of Enchantment, Centennial defeated Las Cruces, 30-23. Deming defeated Gadsden, 12-10. Mayfield falls to Artesia, 43-7. <laughs> Reagan County defeated Anthony, 46-41. And Alpine defeated Tornillo, 43-0. And uh, just a couple of quick out-of-towners. Uh, Midland Legacy held on and uh, took down Midland, their first loss of the season, 49-31. Legacy wins that game. They moved to 3-1 in the district, 7-2 and on the season. Midland High, wow, what a season it's been for them, uh, an all-timer. Uh, they fall to 8-1, and first loss of the year, and 3-1 uh, and in the district, so uh, tied with uh, their partners from, uh, from uh, Midland. Friendship hammers Odessa High 77-49. Odessa coming back to earth now 2-2 two and two in the district, as is Friendship. So uh, next week is going to mean a lot. Of course, Permian uh, slaughtered Central 42-14. Central, the only team out of the running. Uh, five of those six uh, teams still with uh, playoff hopes. Okay, let's go back out to Jeremy Caranco. Get a final from Burgess and Andrus. Jeremy. 
Three seconds left to go, and Andrews has just recovered a muff kick, uh, and that will do it. They will take a knee, and they will win this game with comeback efforts late. Again, the final score, Andrews beats Burgess 28-24. to The game-winning touchdown pass was Joadon Urbina and to Christopher Hager, 15 yards on the third down play with just six seconds left. They do that, and they win this ball game, and they clinch a, plot, a spot in the playoffs in District 2 5A with this win, this dramatic win against Burgess on senior night. For the lead, the winners, the Andrus Eagles, 363 yards of total offense, and Jadon Urbina with three touchdown passes on the night with an interception. Eric Bolcher caught two of those. And, of course, the hero, Christopher Hager, with the late touchdown reception. Marcus Wilson had a good night, 88 yards, and a touchdown. For the Burgess Mustangs, they fall to 1-8 and eight and 1-3 and three now, and we'll see what happens next week. They take on Jefferson, what will essentially be that last playoff spot. And uh, for them, a good night from Caleb Hanna again, 323 yards on the ground and two scores on 23 rushes. Alex Rios, 10 out of 20 for 116 yards. And the leading receiver, Ibrahim Taha, 69 yards, all coming in that second half. The story of this game was late drives. Again, Burgess took a a lead late with just two minutes left to go and three point two point conversion. A two point conversion put them up three. And you would think on senior night here, Burgess gonna win and put themselves in the playoffs. And uh Andrus just makes a statement drive to win this game and they improve to four and five and three and one in district and next week they'll take on their rival Chapin. So it's a final here from Burgess Mustang Stadium. Andrus beats Burgess with six seconds left, twenty eight to twenty four. And, Bo, what a huge win for the youngsters at Andrews. Very much so. And clutch time. And what have we been talking about, really, for the last month? Uh, well, you know, this is not uh, uh, the best you're going to see this Andrews team. They're going to look better next year and the year after that. But when the Kitty Corps starts making plays like this in the crunch against an older uh, uh, Burgess team, a uh, 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 more, more experienced, uh, just older guys, you know, uh, more seniors versus all these sophomores, uh, you know, it just makes you excited for – for uh, the Andrus future. It, it's been a down year for them, not one of their better versions of uh, Andrus Eagle football. But, uh, wow, what, what a nice way to finish. Andrus uh, cinches uh, their playoff uh, spot with the big win over, over Burgess tonight. And uh, onward and upward for uh, this, this version and the future versions of uh, the Andrus Eagles. Very much so. Hey, we got a final, of course, from Isleta's Hutchins Stadium. Dovai defeated Isleta 27-16 in what really turned out to be a fourth-quarter slugfest. For this final postgame report, let's go to Joe Rodriguez at Hutchins Stadium. Joe. Thank you, Thank you very much, Bo. All done out here on the reservation where the Del Valle Conquistadores have picked up their eighth victory of the season and remain undefeated in district play by defeating the hosting Isleta Indians by a score of 27-16. to The surprising thing for this uh, game tonight was that the Coming in, the Del Valle Conquistadores averaged 343 offensive yards per game. 115 of those were on the ground with 227 through the air. Tonight, the Del Valle Conquistadores carried the ball 33 times, 264 yards on the ground. All four of their touchdowns tonight came on rushing touchdowns. And, well, as far as the players of the game, you guys can decide uh, – Running back Juan Archuleta carried the ball 15 times for 126 yards. Meanwhile, quarterback Jake Fede, uh, Fede carried the ball for a grand total of 117 yards. Uh, both of them had a couple of touchdowns on the night for the Devaya Conquistadores, which was the difference in this game. Up next for the Devaya Conquistadores, well, they will host the Bell Air Highlanders in their regular season uh, finale at uh, Conquistador Stadium. Meanwhile, the Slita Indians will travel to the east side and play the Hanks Knights for the final game of the season. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you on the studio. That's all for tonight out here on the reservation. Always a pleasure to come out here at Hutchins Stadium on the campus of Isleta High School where the Del Valle Conquistadores have defeated the Isleta Indians by the score of 27-16. 
And Bo, that uh, game that Joe Rod uh, just spoke of, that's going to be uh, for the for the district title, the Bel Air Highlanders and uh, Delay Conquistadores. Delay, of course, uh, undefeated in the district with a big win over a sled tonight. Bel Air does have the L, but if they uh, are able to find a way to beat Delvai, wow, uh, Delvai seemed invulnerable. Until, you know, we watched that first half versus the Sledda tonight. The Indians really took it to them. If Bel Air can find a way to uh, pull the upset, co-champs, but Bel Air will be the, the top seed. And again, uh, most importantly, get to host uh, the first round of the bi-district playoffs. Very much so. Delvai actually hosts that game, too. Delvai hosts Bel Air next week. Should be a fun one. Mm. And now, speaking of a fun one, Eastwood defeated Franklin tonight 38-31. For this post-game report, let's go out to Trooper Stadium, join Steve Escajeda with more on this game. Steve. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, it was loads of fun in Eastwood. After leading it 28-7 to in the first quarter, had to hold on to knock off the Franklin Cougars 38-31. to but uh, they never ask how. They ask how many. Uh, Franklin, uh, again, great ball game, great uh, comeback. Uh, again, finished the season five and four. Um, but I'm telling you, three of those four losses by single digits, including tonight. Eastwood Troopers, a big win. They clinched the district 168 title with the victory, their eighth straight win of the season, 7 and 0 in district play, 8 and 1 overall. And again, I got a little tighter than they would have liked, but uh, Eastwood holding on for the victory. Uh, some individual stats for the uh, losing Franklin Cougars tonight. Uh, they were led by one guy and one guy only. Quarterback Shea Smith uh, finished the ball game uh, 12 out of 29 through the air for 184 yards, but uh, that was not really the story with him. Uh, it was his uh, feet that did most of the talk in the night. 19 carries, 168 yards, four big touchdowns. In fact, all four of the Franklin touchdowns were scored by Smith tonight. Uh, his favorite receivers were uh, Daniel Duran, five catches, 66 yards, and uh, Jalen uh, Markovsky, five catches for 61 yards. For the victorious Troopers, uh, they were led by their quarterback, uh, Evan Minhares, finished the ball game 13 out of 31 through the air, 297 yards, four touchdowns. He had one pick tonight. He also had a good day on the ground uh, carrying the ball 14 times for 139 yards and one touchdown. Uh, again, his favorite receiver is uh, Rudy Garcia. Seven catches, 164 yards and a score. In fact, it almost seemed like, like the Oprah show tonight. Rudy Garcia got a touchdown. Uh, Alex mm-hmm. Sanchez got a touchdown. Fabian Fenezola got a touchdown. Evan Macias got a touchdown. Four different guys with touchdown catches for these four troopers tonight again, who hold on for a 38-31 victory over Franklin, clinching the District 1-6-A title. Fun ball game, great ball game. And again, uh, Eastwood has a lot more uh, games to play so far uh, throughout the year. While Franklin, uh, they fall 3-4 and four in District, they're going to have to wait and see if they can still get in uh, with that, at least maybe that fourth spot in 1-6-A. Final score here on the east side, it's running ball game. Eastwood holding on to knock out Franklin 38-31. to Thrilling indeed, Steve. Thank you so much. What a win there for the Eastwood Troopers over the Franklin Cougars. We're going to take a break, go through our Ignitify local scoreboard, and talk about next week. Also have our senior, our Oscar Arrieta Agency Player of the Night. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night as we wind things down near getting closer to Halloween. A spooky night and a scary night for some of these scores. Let's go to our Ignitify local scoreboard in our 915 Tours Game of the Week. The Austin Panthers defeated the Bowie Bears 14-9. Elsewhere in 5 and 4A, Irvin fell to San Elizario 25-20. Amazing. Irvin led that game 20 to nothing in the first quarter, but Sinelli wins it 25-20. Also, Canateo defeats Jefferson 51-0. Andrus defeats Burgess 28-24 in a last-second touchdown. Chapin all over El Paso High 66-7. Delvai defeats Isleta 27-16. Parkland over Hanks 38-34. And Bel Air defeats Horizon 54-0. In 6A, Eastwood holds on to defeat Franklin 38-31, Montwood all over El Dorado 41-21. And in 4A, Clint defeats Fabens 28-7, Mountain View falls to Monahan 69-13, Fort Stockton defeats Pecos 28-7. In uh, 3A, Tornillo falls to Alpine 43-0, and in 2A, Reagan County defeats Anthony 46-41. In the state of New Mexico, Las Cruces high. Couldn't hold on to the lead. Centennial defeats Las Cruces 30-23 for the district championship. Also over at Gadsden. Gadsden holding on to a slim lead but couldn't hold it either. Deming defeats Gadsden for the district title 12-10. Elsewhere, Artesia defeats Mayfield 43-7. Now over to Paul McKinnon for our out-of-town scoreboard. Bo, thanks a lot. Of course, to 2-6A, uh, Midland Legacy took down Midland High, gave them their first L of the season, 49-31. Friendship uh, blows by Odessa. A lot of points. 77-49, to they win that one, Odessa Permian. 42-14 to over Central. Now, what that means is, in District 2-6A, remember these are the teams that the Eastwoods and the Montwoods, which has clinched a playoff berth now, and the Pebble Hillses, and uh, America's next week, uh, if they go through uh, Socorro, that'll be the fourth and final uh, playoff contestant from 1-6-A. But uh, in 2-6-A, Midland Lee and Midland now tied atop that district at 3-1 and one in the district. And then a three-way tie among Odessa High, Wolford Friendship, and Odessa Permian at 2-2 two and two for those final two playoff spots. So even though a team like Eastwood... Hey, they know their stuff. We're the district champs. We're going to host the first game uh, by district playoffs. <laughs> They're not going to have a clue who for uh, for another weekend. Of course, uh, Odessa Odessa High is is the team. Uh, they're a big school, and if they make the playoffs, that's going to send both the Midlands down to the small school playoffs. And if Odessa doesn't, uh, that means Mid- Midland Leg- Legacy will wind up back in the uh, in the big school uh, for sure. Uh, elsewhere, other scores, other districts. 2-5-A, uh, Lubba Cooper all over Tascosa, 45-27, uh, 4-1 in the district they are. Tascosa falls to 2-3. and three. Abilene takes care of Amarillo High, stays undefeated in the district, 24-14. Amarillo, their second loss in district. Uh, they're still in the playoff hunt. Uh, elsewhere, District 2-5-A, Division 2, Wiley all over Paladuro. Uh, 33-16, they're 3-1, and one, only one loss. And they're one loss, of course, to Wichita Falls Rider, who, who's the beast. Uh, they're 49-16 tonight. They handle uh, Plainview. Uh, Lubba Cooper, the others, excuse me, Abilene Cooper. So many Coopers, 61-7 in a Thursday nighter. All over Lubbock High as they move to 3-1 and one in that district is all, uh, as uh, well. Uh, and remember, the, 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 the district that gets these guys is the uh, 1-5-A we listened to tonight. The Andruses and the Burgesses. Burgess and El Paso High and Jeff are going to be fighting it out for that fourth and final playoff spot. That'll all happen next week. Burgess finishes with Jeff, and they will be playing for the right to face Wichita Falls Rider. That's what happened to Burgess tonight when they uh, dropped the the shootout to Andrus. Uh, now they're just playing to, to face a Wichita Falls Rider. So uh, small victory. Uh, 2-4-A, Andrews and Brownwood. Brownwood all over Andrews, 28-14. to Estacado, same to Big Spring, 33-13. As they move to 2-1 and one in the district, Big Spring falls to 1-2. and two. Seminole handles Leveland, 45-19. to And uh, Perrytown all over Borger, 41-14. to And that's your out-of-town scoreboard for the night. All right, Paul McKinnon, thank you very much. That's our Ignitify scoreboard. Ignitify your 
AC Installation Service. They have a five-star rating on Google. Set up an appointment today. Ignitify is known for maintenance and repairs to your cooling system. Visit IgnitifyEP.com to get started today. We want to remind you, visit 600ESPNElPaso.com for recaps, photos by Prep 1, and final scores for Football Friday Night. Make sure to subscribe to the Football Friday Night On Demand for the replay of each show. Football Friday Night On Demand is available wherever you get your podcasts. There were some huge huge stat gainers tonight i mean stats uh, scoreboards lit up all over across the borderland paul who do you got for our player of the night our oscar Arieta agency top athlete well there's there's about 20 uh, that we can grab but uh, you know what why go any further than uh, than our game of the week uh, the austin Bowie game buoy excuse me austin uh, holds off buoy 14 to 9 and uh, the biggest star of that one was a guy with the uh, buoy ties uh, the Anduho family, uh, Andres, uh, I believe he's only a sophomore, four catches, 145 yards, the big 70-yard touchdown that uh, put Austin up uh, for good, 14-3 to at the time, and they were able to hold him off. One of the reasons they were able to hold him off, Anduho with a big interception at the end. Remember his dad, Jose Anduho, uh, uh, some time with Bowie, also some time with Jeff, and all those Anduho brothers from back in the day, uh, their, their Bowie legacy roots go deep so it had to be a sweet night for uh for andres and uh for his dad jose and of course for eric pichardo and, and the rest of that austin panther group uh with all that in mind uh andy anduho our uh, player of the night and from a locally owned insurance agency the oscar arieta agency is proud to serve el paso with four locations in town their oscar arieta agency can help with your home auto and life insurance Oscar Arieta is the official insurance agent of the UTEP Miners. Visit RiseUp915 to learn more about prizes and giveaways for the Oscar Arieta agency. And what a night it was. Now playoffs right around the corner. The last night of the regular season next week for football in West Texas. New Mexico State playoffs start next week. Uh, It's going to be a lot of fun as we wind down week 10 of football Friday night. Paul, your your final thoughts as as we wind down this show tonight? Already looking forward to next week. Uh, Always my favorite show of the season, week 11, just because there's so much going on, including who beat whom by how many points. And I have a feeling that's what we're going to be doing with Mountain View and Pecos. And, uh, well, the Clint Lions, unfortunately, will be sitting and watching, hoping uh, they're able to remain in the playoffs after a big win tonight over Fabens. And let's call it right now our 915 Tours Game of the Week. The Bel Air Highlanders at the Del Valle Conquistadors. That will be for the district title. That's going to be a fun one. And the way Del Valle played tonight and even the way Bel Air played tonight, putting up 50-plus points. Uh, this could be uh, a good game. And once again, thanks to Alex Nicholas, Bel Air has not won a district championship since 1990. Could it happen next week? That will be our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Well, for producer Angel Munoz and Paul McKinnon, and for all of our reporters all around town, I'm Bo Bagley. Thank you for tuning in to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. We'll see you next week for the final week of the regular season.